My lovely, lovely imps. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video about Anna Kasparian of the Young Turks. For those who don't know, the Young Turks is a uh, it is a political commentary uh, journalistic uh, outlet, um, which uh, has, for most of its history, branded itself as being pretty solidly left-leaning, a voice of the left. They uh, have always leaned very much into being lefties and and. Uh, uh, and also specifically, not just not just being like left-leaning liberals, but specifically that they challenge the liberal establishment, that they go above and beyond the Democratic Party because they're they've always tried to brand themselves as sort of firebrand leftists who are trying to push the Democratic Party um, in some ways and more than others, you know. Uh, uh, but uh, as of late, the the Young Turks seem to be struggling with identity just a little bit um, as far as their political identity. Um, over time, we've seen them embracing some positions that uh, most people would charitably characterize as not progressive. Um, and I think that, uh, in fact, I, my entire last video, which if you're curious about what I'm talking about, I, I encourage you to go check it out. Just search Anna Kasparian and Demon Mama in the same line and you'll find my video about it. Uh, in fact, I did two videos, but they were kind of spaced out. Anyway, uh, this was going over a, a very odd situation um, in which Anna Kasparian uh, took a lot of time out of her her uh, day, multiple days, literally a actually adding up to being this a saga that went on for for multiple weeks, um, to to talk about this term that she had sort of characterized in a very unfair light, which is the term birthing person. Um, and this became an entire thing because on one hand, there was these people basically saying, what, you're telling me that Anna Kasparian is wrong just because she wants to be respected as a woman? And on the other hand, you have people pointing out and saying, hey, wait a minute, that's not actually what Anna Kasparian said. Instead, Anna Kasparian made the argument that the term birthing person was in and of itself offensive and also made it, uh, tied it to a bunch of other arguments in one place that actually crossed into the grounds of transphobia to the degree that she was being called out not just by random Twitter users, not by an angry mob of keyboard warriors, not by, uh, uh, you know, just random YouTube commenters, but by other left-leaning media professionals, including Emma Vigland, Sam Cedar, um, uh, uh, David Dole, uh, 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 Matt Binder, a lot of other people uh, took time out of their day and they weren't being harsh to her at all. In fact, in my video, I went through all of the major responses that she got from her colleagues, um, which she was characterizing as people like screaming and threatening her. We went and actually looked at the comments that she received from these people and they were incredibly measured. They responded to her with arguments that she had made within the last few years on her own piece. And in fact, her own rhetoric in the past against people saying the exact position that she had was the opposite of what she was saying now. So there's been a lot of frustration on this particular issue uh, since then. And unfortunately, since the initial incident happened uh, that I'm talking about, uh, Anna Kasparian has continued to engage in a very, let's just say, uncharitable uh, 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 manner towards people specifically on trans issues. That's the only way that I can really explain it. And it's unfortunate because it could have just stopped with a disagreement on a specific term. It could have just been like, I don't like this term for whatever reason. And people could have said, we don't agree with you, but it hasn't just stopped there. And it's gotten to the point now um, that uh, Anna has done multiple on her show segments ranting about how um, trans uh, activists and trans extremists have gone too far. Today, on social media, 
Anna Kasparian, who, let me remind you, is a self-purported journalist and is in possession of an absolutely massive platform um, uh, with regard to left-leaning media and liberal media. Anna's platform is enormous as far as these things go. Um, has decided to devote uh, her platform to uh, uh, screaming about how trans activists are making things worse for trans people, according to her, with of course no evidence or examples of this, uh, and has even gone so far now to make an appearance on a right-wing podcast, which some of you may be familiar with. Now, the podcast in question is known as uh, Adam and Sitch. They are not exactly what I would call like big timers, but they've been around for a while. And if that name sounds familiar to you as a Demon Mama viewer, it might be because they have obsessively made videos about me, despite the fact, let me just be clear, I, have, I did not fire at Adam and Sitch. Adam and Sitch have made an incredible amount of videos about me. In fact, let me just show you some of them. Batshit insane debate featuring Doomer politics. Demon Mama argues that schools shouldn't be mandatory, XD. Demon Mama cannot define gender, Adam and Sitch. Demon Mama rage quits mid-debate. Socialist Demon Mama doesn't care about the lower class. Demon Mama wants to force a world of lies. Demon Mama wants to replace school with video games. Now, of course, most of these are literally just outright lies, but that's never stopped the right wing before. Uh, like I said, I have never, uh, uh, I had never fired at Adam and Sitch. I never had any beef with them prior to them making an absolutely incredible amount of, and uh, by the way, let me just show you, this video is a nine hour and 41 minute video about me. This one, admittedly, is only a 15 minute clip. This one's another 11 minute clip, 11 minute clip, 11 minute clip, 11 minute clip. But this one is a nine hour video about me. And so yeah, this is the right wing podcast that Anna Kasparian decided to make an appearance on to discuss where she stands politically. And we're actually going to react to that today. Um, because I have been told by a lot of people and I have seen from her social media presence, which of course, let me remind you again, her social media presence is not some like tiny private account. It's her forward facing uh, public account associated with her professional identity on which she has been arguing at and screaming at various people, including trans people, telling random trans people that disagreed with her that they are the reason that trans people are being oppressed, which is an insane thing to do and quite unprofessional and also a pretty weird thing to do if you consider yourself a progressive leftist. Now, I've seen a clip from this debate and it certainly uh, has some questions, but Today, we're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna get right into it. We're gonna, we're gonna watch the clip raw. We're gonna see what Anna has to say for herself and we're gonna react to it. Um, I made my opinion on the way that Anna Kasparian handled uh, the previous controversy quite clear in my other videos, but I'm gonna summarize it here. I think that Anna Kasparian um, is at this point, uh, uh, willfully ignorant um, when it comes to trans issues and might even be going so far as to be intentionally grifting to the right, using trans people as a wedge issue in order to grow her audience. Because um, as, we, as I show and demonstrate in my other video, again, evidence is all present in that video if you wanna go see all of it, uh, these are not the arguments that she's made when it was inconvenient, when it was convenient for her in the past. Uh, she has started to make arguments that are contrary to arguments she's made on her show, uh, and also to do, to just go out of the way to do uh, 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 extremely weird apologia uh, for anti-trans figures. An example of this today on so or, or yesterday on social media, Anna Kasparian. Uh, took time out of her day to defend uh, Jesse Singal, 
Um, if that name doesn't ring any bells for you, Jesse Singal is one of the most prolific um, anti-trans uh, journalists out there. He has devoted his blog and his uh, and his in internet presence to basically spending most of his time talking about. Uh, about how trans people are part of a dangerous ideology that he does not substantiate. He's not a serious actor, and most of what he does is launder uh, the reputation of trans exclusionary radical feminists, AKA TERFs. He basically pretends to just ask questions while um, completely misrepresenting serious issues, while completely misrepresenting arguments, and while casting trans people uh, in the most horrible light possible. He has been severely criticized by trans and cis people who take these issues seriously to a great degree. Um, and, and, and we've even talked about Jesse Singal in the past on this show. Um, but Jesse Singal is, uh, is, is infamous for going for how hard he, or how much time and how hard he, he uh, goes on trans people and how much he frames trans people as a part of some sort of dangerous group of people that are targeting your kids. It's really deranged. And Anna Kasparian went out of her way to try and defend this guy. It's a very strange move, uh, and I can't say that I approve of it or uh, 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 or understand it. Um, I, I, I genuinely think uh, that it's 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 uh, it's out of line, especially for somebody who has spent her entire career uh, as a progressive uh, and 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 you know talking to a progressive audience. Now, let me just tell you. Um, before we jump into this actual debate, this has not gone over well with Anna Kasparian general fan base. On social media, she has received an incredible amount of pushback from her own fan base, which she has admitted. She has said that her own fan base is incredibly angry at her and that they feel like she's handling the issue poorly and also has stated that she doesn't care. So, okay then. Um, anyway, I think I've given enough of a preamble to give us the necessary contextual knowledge uh, to get into this. Let's see what Anna Kasparian has to say for herself on the right-wing podcast, Adam and Sitch. By the way, I'm not being, un I'm being very charitable by calling Adam and Sitch a right-wing podcast. Um, we have, we have talked about Adam and Sitch in the past, specifically that they've made so many weird videos obsessing about me and misrepresenting my positions. Um, but we've actually gone through and looked at all of their views. And I challenge you, if you think that I'm being, if I'm not being honest with my representation of Adam and Sitch as a right-wing podcast, please go check out their videos and and tell me if, if, uh, if you think, what views you think don't align with the right. Because I would argue that not only I'm being charitable by saying that they're a right-wing podcast. I would actually argue um, that most of the time their arguments are far right, not just right-wing. Adam banned me on, tw uh, blocked me on Twitter for saying it's right-wing. They're very touchy about this. Oh, I don't care how touchy they are about it. The opinions that they put forward on their show are consistently right-wing, if not far right-wing. So I'm being charitable by saying that it's a right-wing show. I think, um, I mean, look, let's just take a look. Let's take a look at what they put out for videos and we'll see if we can get an idea just from, just from what they put out here. Tim Pool's best take ever after two kids, no taxes, uh, heated heated uh, uh, debate, FBI corruption, hidden truth or conspiracy. Sean destroys actual justice warrior who is again a far writer, destroys leftist on Tim Pool. Leftists seethe over charity stream because money was given to somebody else, apparently, with them mad at Keffels. H3H3 versus Just Pearly Things. Should women be allowed to vote? Just Pearly Things misquotes Thomas Sowell and doubles down on H3H3. Non-binary rant. Nobody has to respect your aesthetic. Uh, uh, here's them. Gross leftist cares more about policing hashtags than violent crime victim. Gamergate rematch. They are warping gay and civil rights to push identity politics. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I, I, I think that the content of their, 
uh, of their channel speaks for itself. All right, let's get into this. No more, no more preamble. We've had enough preamble. Let's get right into this. Okay. Hey now, it's your boy PSA Sitch here with another Sunday Sunday show with everyone's favorite Supreme Court enthusiast, Adam Franda. Oh yeah, yeah, I've been reading up on the Supreme Court, Sitch. I'm learning- Have you seen Ben Burgess defending her? No, I don't need to see Ben Burgess doing anything. Honestly, uh, I am not a fan of Ben Burgess. So much about how <laughs> our country functions. It's amazing. And we have, look, a special guest with us here today, Anna Kasparian, co-host of The Young Turks. Do you, do you you want to introduce yourself? I mean, I feel like everyone, our audience definitely knows who you are, but you're probably doing other things as well. At the moment, I'm not. I'm mostly uh, focusing on TYT. But yeah, I'm the executive producer and co-host of The Young Turks mm -hmm. and have been since 2007. And, um, you know, I've done other things on the side at various points uh, of my career. But for now, that's the main focus. Okay, so we're very mm -hmm. excited to have this conversation. We started talking a little bit before the show, and you seem open to talking about a lot of things. You seem to be going through kind of a political transformation, evolution. I don't hmm. really know the right word to call it, but I'll let you talk about that. But <laughs> Wow, this goes right into it, doesn't it? By the way, just so we're clear, I have not seen this. I have only seen two clips from this entire conversation. So most of this, I have no idea what to expect. You're going through a political transformation. By the way, these guys are obviously salivating. They love it whenever a leftist leaves the left or whenever they even signal like they're going to. These guys love that shit. And of course, it's stupid because it doesn't mean anything. But for them, they can convince their... Uh, their audience that like, oh, the left is falling apart because that's what they always say. The left is falling apart. The left is falling apart. Even though like literally today, uh, like gays against groomers, a, a, a right wing organization completely and utterly blew up uh, because it was discovered that one of their leading members was a, a super Ron DeSantis guy working for Ron DeSantis and taking money from Ron DeSantis, even though like actual gigantic right wing organizations are blowing up on the daily right now. And there's a schism in the Republican Party so great that they might not even be able to stand, have a chance in the election because it's split so hard between Donald Trump and literally everyone else in the GOP. Uh, but yeah, it's the left that's blowing apart, you know, first anyway. of all, People want to know, because I, I did, you did mention in our little chat in DMs mm -hmm. that I was wrong about the Daily Wire thing. Now, <laughs> I make predictions on the show all the time, and I have never right. been wrong before. So uh, people, I, I've been making jokes about you may, might end up at the Daily Wire. That's not true? No, no. <laughs> it's, so it's funny because, you know, I'm going through something. very real and very sincere and it's uncomfortable and it has not been an enjoyable process for me it's been difficult and so the internet being what it is all sorts of people from all sorts of political ideologies have theories on like what's actually happening with me right and the main accusation both from the left and the right is that i'm i'm grifting which is hilarious because literally nothing has changed about my work life i'm in the mm -hmm. same place what? <laughs> what? I'm sorry. <laughs> what does that mean? Literally nothing has changed about my work life. So that just means you were grifting all along? Is that what you're trying to say? Like that's what a, that, that doesn't, that's not a response that refutes the idea that you're grifting. That makes you sound worse. I have the same audience. Um, the audience doesn't like some of what I have to say or some of the new conclusions I've, I've come to. And so I wanted to kind of set the record straight about what I have personally experienced. I don't know what my political labels are at this point, right? Because I feel like I don't really fit anywhere. <laughs> oh my God, it's literally, it's literally a how I left the left. Wait, this is literally a I left the left video. I was just goofing with my title. It's actually how I left the left.
She sure said she was a progressive a few years ago. No, no, guys, let's be 100% clear. Anna Kasparian has been extremely loud about being a leftist, has been extremely loud about what the left should do. Anna Kasparian, even in recent weeks, has been, been spending a ton of time telling the left what what the left should do that's been her position for almost her entire time the in the the left is the a demographic that she has been batting to she is she fucked up on this point and she really fucked up i need you to understand that that this isn't like some giant cancellation she was fucking dead wrong to the degree that people were posting her own clips back at her and she would just block them for sh for showing that she obviously understands the argument and is just digging her heels in uh we, again on my last video i went through all of the professionals uh, who are also make left-leaning shows who actually said hey here's the reason what we're taking this this is the reason we're having issues with you making this point and also not just that you're making this point but that you're quadrupling down that you're then going after trans activists during a time when the entire right wing is obsessed with with the most heinous uh, uh, with propagating the most heinous lies about trans people you can possibly imagine. For those of you who are watching right now who don't usually watch my content, okay? I talk about the trans issues in America a lot because I am trans, okay? It's an important issue to me and I feel like I have a lot to say about it. I made a video uh, uh, about uh, the threat of trans genocide in America that is fully researched. I have all my sources laid out for you. Um, uh, you can search it on my channel. It's super easy to find. Um, and and uh, there is no ifs, ands, or buts about what the right is doing in America right now. The right is obsessed with trans people. The Dylan Mulvaney situation where the entire right completely latched on to a random trans celebrity, a trans celebrity who isn't even super political. Dylan Mulvaney is not like some super activist. She's just a regular person. They latched onto her because she got a promotional beer can and had freaked out about her to the degree that they were accosting her in person, stalking her, making threats on her life, threatening her in person just for being trans and a, and a publicly existing trans person. So Anna Kasparian isn't just uh, going after trans activists, misrepresenting arguments, making deranged and totally, uh, totally logically incoherent arguments about trans people. She's doing it in the middle of an unprecedented targeting of trans people in the United States of America. She's chosen and just so for the record, that was the thrust of most of her media professional colleagues cr criti critiquing her. They were saying, first of all, your argument is messed up, but what makes you think that you should be using your platform, your limited time of day, and the limited airtime that you have on your show to further target trans people? And of course, her answer has been, fuck you, I do what I want. The the kid gloves that Anna Kasparian has been treated with by the general left is unbelievable. Unbelievable the amount of kid gloves that most people have held. Now I was a little more mean because I'm a little bit mean. And I know that and you guys know that. I'm pretty, pretty honest. When I think somebody's being a fucking piece of shit, when I think they're being deliberately obtuse, when I think that they're lying, and when I think that they're grifting, I'm not afraid to be a little mean. I think that's well within my rights. But I am only one, and I am not even close to the biggest voice. The biggest voices that came after her did so with kid gloves. Where and it's that's just full honesty. It's again very uncomfortable for me, and I want to say that out of any point in my adult life, this is probably the point where I'm the most malleable and open to new information because of what I've experienced over the last few years. And I can get into details about that um, in just a moment. But that was the reason why I told Adam that no, this isn't like a Daily Wire thing. I, I you know, have no interest in working at the Daily Wire. I have no interest in leaving TYT. If anything, I just feel a responsibility to kind of correct what I got wrong in the past uh, to the best of my ability and just do better moving forward. And the, the reason why I've been at TYT as long as I have is despite what any of you might think about Jake, he has never once 
try to censor me or tell me what I can and can't say. That's the reason why, you know, we get into these fiery debates and there's never any like retaliation for it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as long as I'm free to speak my mind and genuinely speak my mind the way I have been, uh, I plan on staying there. And there's absolutely no monetary or financial incentive for me to do anything I'm doing right now. Well, we, Sitch and I box. That's oh. bullshit, by the way. That is complete and utter bullshit. Just 100, 1,000% 1, bullshit. And you want to know the easiest way that I can prove to you that this is false? $20 anti-woke beer, okay? The right wing is so, e they're so willing to part m their ways with their money as long as it makes them feel good about their political agenda, that they are able to actually make money off of $20 per four pack, 4% uh, 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 4 alcohol by volume anti-woke beer, okay? The idea that there is no money in grifting to the right is complete and utter bullshit. In fact, um, it's funny that she's saying this in the same sentence as the Daily Wire. Do we remember, do we not remember that just a few months ago, uh, Steven Crowder revealed that the Daily Wire was going to, was, go, was offering him a $50 million contract to work for the Daily Wire? And that he said that that wasn't enough because he was w making way more on his own show? Do we not? Have we forgotten so quickly? The right is very easy to pander to, and there is a ton of money in, available in pandering to the right. That's why we have a bunch of idiotic corporate yes-men who work for the right, who get the coke money, who get the massive dollars for just saying the stupidest shit you can possibly imagine. Where do you think, you think that the, the Daily Wire comes out of nowhere? The Daily Wire has an insane financial backing. The money is easily available on the right. You don't get money for being a lefty. You don't even get money for being a liberal in America, okay? Not unless you literally work for the Democratic Party, okay? You don't get that kind of money on the left. It just doesn't happen. The reason why people stay on the left is because of their genuinely held beliefs, beliefs, not because they're making all kinds of money. This idea that there's like no money in pandering to the right is just patently false. And you know what's funny? Anna Kasparian has talked about it on her show. The, I, I guarantee you, there are TYT listeners right now in the audience. Any of you guys TYT listeners? How many how many times on TYT have you heard Anna Kasparian and Chink go off on how much money there is on the right? It's practically one of Chink's favorite things to talk about. Oh, you guys know. Oh, you guys know. It's tons of money. The corporate the corporations love the right. They'll dump money into that. But us over here, we got to be viewer supported. They talk about it fucking constantly. So she's full of shit. She's lying because it makes their audience feel like, oh, look, she's honest, see? Fucking bullshit. Any of you out there in my audience who are fans of TYT, if you guys have been watching TYT for a while, uh, so one of you should put together a compilation of all the times on TYT that Anna Kasparian herself has talked about how much money there is on, on pandering to the right. In fact, I think she's shit specifically on Dave Rubin for pandering to the right. I think she's specifically gone after former TYT member Dave Rubin for going to the right for the money. Absolutely full of shit. This is the thing, you see? This is why I get so frustrated at this shit. And this is why people are calling Anna Kasparian a grifter, by the way, because she'll lie straight to your face. She acts as though most of the people criticizing her aren't people who've watched her show, aren't people who, fo who followed her. I personally have followed Anna Kasparian for a very long time. I used to watch every single appearance of Anna Kasparian on the Michael Brooks show. And I know that she's lying to your to our faces right now. Jesus fucking Christ. A lot on this show. And I mm -hmm. think people, you know, I think they like that. I think they admire that, that we are able to fight with one another over a policy oh, yeah. position. Michael Tracy, people are pointing out. Yeah, let's see. I wonder if she's ever talked about Michael Tracy grifting to the right for money. 
She and Michael ridiculed Dave for cashing in on the right. Wow. Almost like Anna thinks that her viewers are fucking stupid. Well, the good news is she's she's pandering herself now to people who are stupid, people who don't care. The thing is about the right is that uh, you hollow yourself out to become a right-wing grifter. Uh, those motherfuckers will eat dog food as long as it confirms all of their biases. As long as you're you're telling them, oh yeah, the left is fucked up. The left is cancel crazy and everybody was so mean to me. They'll be like, ooh, ooh, yeah, we're into it. Pathetic. Hollow on out. Oh yeah, don't forget Jimmy Dore too. She's she. I, I believe on. I believe we've watched a segment of her saying Jimmy Dore did it for the money, on this show. In fact, I did a drama mama favorably covering Anna Kasparian in the Jimmy Dore drama. Tyt is like. Tyt is like a factory of grifters. It's a fucking factory of grifters. Jimmy Dore, Michael Tracy, Dave Rubin. One after the next of people getting all set up in TYT and then full on grifting to the right. Man, it's pathetic. And then they fucking lie to your face like this with a smile. Position and still walk away, friends. So I spent the... La Hassan is the only good one to come out of TYT. He left TYT. He speci he deliberately left TYT because he was tired of their shit. Oh wait, Emma Vigland. Oh, wait, did Emma start at TYT? Hold on, did Emma Vigland start at TYT? Cuz if so, I might have to do myself I might have to do myself an ouch. Okay. To be fair, though, Emma has also been really critical of TYT since then. There. I'll amend my statement. I went a little too hard. They did produce Emma Vigland, and I fucking love Emma Vigland. Not in a non-parasocial way. Like, I, I just really like Emma Vigland's work, and I think Emma Vigland is, like, a banger choice to be the host of The Majority Report as a, like, nearly decade-long listener to the majority report. Emma is a treasure. But she also, I will point out, not to completely undo my point, I'll own that I was wrong about that part. They're not a complete bad person factor factory. But she's criticized the shit out of them. Let's continue. Last week, I was watching a bunch of your most recent videos Mm -hmm. And I mean, you're snapping back at Jank quite <laughs> often. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, it's actually quite refreshing. There's a couple things, and I, we we have questions on these, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I'll I'll let Sitch. I don't know. Do you have anything that you want to ask before we get well, started? So yeah, it turns out that Anna is a massive fan. Her, uh, Emma's initial response about Anna, Anna was bad too, though. Remember, no, it wasn't bad. She was just being she was being very charitable. And Sam went a little further. And then when Anna quadrupled down, Emma called her out. Emma was, like I said, like many people, get being, being kid gloves. The kid gloves that were broken out for Anna Kasparian in this particular case, it was off the charts, okay? I'm serious. Sam, of course, is, I, I, I have always been a big Sam stan, okay? I, for a long time, Sam was my first entry uh, into the left as far as like uh, uh, content online goes. When I, you know, when I got out of the, the Christian cult that I was raised in and I was trying to figure out politics on my own, Sam Cedar was one of the first entries I ever had into the left, like literally. And, and I've always respected Sam. And one of the things I've always respected about Sam is that he's not only always been super progressive when it comes to trans issues, but that he's always been willing to listen to people who know more about trans issues than him, like to a massive degree. And I've always respected that about Sam. And it's something that continues to make him a strong figure 
because he doesn't just he doesn't dig in his feet and get reactionary. He's constantly willing to learn and improve his positions in a way that like is is better than half of of us. Almost nobody in these spaces is good at improving his positions as Sam. Sorry, it's just true. And of our program, she's in <laughs> every episode, just huge fan, right? <laughs> Well, okay, so I happened to come across a video you guys did about me. It was the stream on, um, I hate to name names, but you guys were covering the leftist mafia and their insane <laughs> gaslighting video about me. And I The leftist mafia's insane gaslighting video was not an insane gaslighting video. We watched it. They correctly represented her opinion, and they were, with one exception, incredibly gentle to her. The only person who was not super gentle to her was Olay. Olay, who said what everybody else should have been saying, which is, nah, that's bullshit. She is a grown fucking woman. She knows her opinions. She's said opinions to the opposite in the past and never acknowledges them. She's wrong, and I'm gonna call her wrong. And Olay was base for it. And by the way, uh, Anna Kasparian was the one who had a fucking meltdown about Olay, not the other way around. The rest of the, of we watched that clip of the leftist mafia and they were, oh, oh you know, we don't want to be mean, but you might, you were wrong. You should reconsider this. Even though Anna Kasparian was so fucking wrong that there's, you can literally play a clip of her from two years ago directly refuting her current argument for the correct reasons that all of these critics were laying out. I hate to harp on that, but holy shit. She's just so fucking full of shit. You guys were the only ones as far as I could- Yeah, and people are pointing out Anna jumped on Olay in a Twitter thread that wasn't even about her. Yes, it's insane. She's been fucking going off the shits for no reason. It's just a giant public hissy fit that conveniently allows her to grift to the right. Oh God, well, we'll look into that. See mm -hmm. that actually did a good job in highlighting how badly they were gaslighting me. Right. And so I thank you for doing that because, you know, when everyone around you, everyone who alleges to be your friends, tells you something you know isn't true, but they keep repeating it to you over and over again, you start asking yourself like, am I the crazy one? You know? <laughs> The answer is yes, you are being crazy. I'm not kidding you. I'm not fucking uh, 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 gaslighting or anything like that. It is, it is a crazy thing to get so pissed off off of a tiny podcast. We actually talked about how small the Leftist Mafia podcast is to the degree that you then derail your own content from your media professional studio with your millions of followers to the degree that you are melting down over someone very gently criticizing you to the degree that you are misrepresenting what everybody else the pe the so-called friends you won't even honestly represent what they actually said to you publicly which everyone can see. Anybody who cares about this issue can go and look and see what was said to you and the way that you characterize it. And then you say they're gaslighting you when they, all they said was, hey, think you're wrong on this. Here's the reason why. That is a crazy thing to do. That is a crazy thing to do. Yes. <laughs> so that, I really appreciated that. But you know, you guys have put out a ton of videos about me that have not been friendly or nice and it's okay. I mean, I, I can be a good sport about it. And I do mm -hmm. think that you guys raised a few um, valid points and I just need to be willing to accept where I was wrong and where people are critiquing from good faith. Like you guys have a little bit of an edgy style. So I'll, I'll <laughs> acknowledge that. An edgy style. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, a fucking edgy style. Wait, do you guys remember when we watched, um, hey, throwback for the old school Demon Mama fans. Do you guys remember when we watched TJ Kirk arguing and Adam Friended and PSA Sitch said that uh, the science didn't matter because it was trans science and that therefore invalidated 
designated it as if any science that was done by any organization that has come to a positive conclusion about trans people, that it should just be thrown out because it was degenerate science. Do you guys remember that? I do. I fucking remember that. Yeah, edgy style. Spending half your content going insane over trans people and trying to push the idea that there's a gender ideology calling trans people groomers. Yeah, edgy style. Also, yeah, let's just remember... Oh my god. Yeah, 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 let's, run, let's not forget that she had a meltdown because Vosh called her, and I quote, a retard. And she had a fucking on-stream meltdown about that. But now she's on a show that regularly fucking calls trans people groomers. Yeah, okay. But I have thick skin, so it didn't really bother And of course, JQ's like crazy. Bother me that much. That's, yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's commendable. Um, you know, it's, we are on this kind of like internet environment where everyone's very attacky to each other. Totally. Especially yeah. when they're not like engaging with them in person. Hey, what do you call it? What would you call it when PSA, Sitch, and Adam made like six videos lying about me and I'd never spoken about them at all? Do you think that's maybe attacky at each other? Do you think maybe that's a little attacky at each other? I wonder what their, by the way, I wonder what their motivation, I wonder what their motivation for targeting me could have been all about. Huh. I wonder what, hmm. Wasn't their first video about me not being able to like define gender or something? Hmm. Weird. I wonder what they're mad at me about. <laughs> so. Yeah. You, you have to have, have kind of a, a thick skin. And I know, but I mean, you you know, talking about earlier, and, and one of the things that I, we always commended you on was, you know, when you publicly came out and you said that you were wrong about the, the Rittenhouse video, which, I mean, most people, when they make a mistake, they just try to hide it or they try to shift blame. You know, Jimmy Dore very, you know, famously shifted blame to his producer. And I thought it was really commendable that you came out and you're like, no, 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 I got this wrong. And you mm -hmm. were trying to, trying to show, not just do this for, like for your sake, but to say, like, listen, audience, you know, you need to understand that this is the story. And, and you know, I don't want you guys to have the wrong information. Yeah, there was, look, I... The one, I guess, through line you'll notice in the various things that we're going to talk about in this conversation is that it just become more. It just became abundantly clear to me that where I was getting my information, and I'm not just talking about like you know independent lefty outlets. I'm talking about like legacy media outlets, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of them. It's not that they report misinformation. It's that they omit details of the story that right. would, you know, maybe the de the additional details of the story don't change your mind at all, right? But it's not up to them to decide that. Like, we should know every detail. I think the Amy Cooper story is another example. You know, I it was fairly recently I came across uh, Camille Foster's very in-depth investigation into that story. The Amy Cooper situation? Wait, hold on a second. The Amy Cooper situation is the Central Park bird watching incident where that lady was choking her dog, freaking out at some random dude because he was black, and then she said that she, and then she started acting like she was being attacked on the phone when you can see in the video that he's not moving towards her at all. Come the fuck on. Are we really at this level? Are we accelerating that quickly? Yeah, I guess it's that. Yeah, no, you know what? Nah, fuck. Fuck it. No, no, Puerto Rican musician, this ain't the fucking white woman solidarity. Maybe it's the white identified woman. Because, uh, cause, you know, uh, I, I think that, I do think that Anna Kasparian takes her white identity a little more seriously than somebody like me. But not to, not to call it out, but I got the light skin as well. And you don't see me fucking standing in solidarity with freaks like that. So with all due respect, blame this one on fucking Anna Kasparian. Because uh, most of the whiteies realized that was fucking crazy behavior. And there were so many details of that story that were intentionally omitted or left out of the legacy media reporting of it. And that painted a picture in my mind and in the minds of many others that, you know, there's there's no justification for the way that she was, you know, panicking when she was on the phone with the 911 dispatcher. Right. But then you get this. Then you find out based on what Camille Foster had um, found out and reported was that like she didn't have good cell reception so the person on the other end of um that conversation couldn't hear her she was oh come on 
Oh, come the fuck on. You've got to be fucking kidding me. That's fucking insane. Do we need to... No. I, wait, do you guys remember? Do you guys remember the debate that I had? Some of my old school fans. I had a debate uh, on the Hippy Dippy podcast with Dylan Burns. And I believe it was with... Was it I Hypocrite? Or was it Actual Justice Warrior? Where I literally, on my side of the stream, I played the video because the guy was just lying about it. And he was trying to say that he that the that the guy was like walking towards her. And all of these, they have a they have a mountain of lies that they will make up. And so I said, you know what? We can't do this because you this is a panel, so I can't put my video in. But anybody who wants to, I'm gonna just play the video real quick. Oh, shut the fuck up. Whoa, hey! TikTok model, please shut the fuck up! Fuck TikTok. Never mind. See? This is why we never do TikTok. Fuck TikTok. Should I just play the clip right now? How long is it? Full video. It's one minute. Let's watch it. Would you please stop? Sorry, I'm asking you to stop. Please don't come close to me. Sir, I'm asking you to stop recording me. Please don't come close to me. Please take your phone off. Please don't come close to me. I'm taking pictures of calling the cops. Please, please call the cops. Please call the cops. I'm gonna- Oh, it's the- it's the- it was the cell. It's- it's the- it's the cell reception, right? Tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. Please tell them whatever you like. I'm going to call the police and tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. Excuse me? As the dog is literally choking I'm and struggling, by the way. And there is a man, African-American, he has a bicycle helmet. He is recording me and threatening me and my dog. There is an African American man. I am in Central Park. He is recording me and threatening myself and my dog. And my. I'm sorry, I can't hear you either. I'm being threatened by a man in the ramble. Please send the cops immediately. I'm in Central Park in the ramble. I don't know. Thank you. Um, actually, um, uh, actually, it was because of the cell reception, actually. Panicking because she mm -hmm. genuinely thought that she was at risk after, here's another thing that was omitted in a lot of the reports, after she was literally threatened by the bird watcher, right? Who said, right. you know, if you're going to do what you want, I'm going to do what I want. And you're literally threatened as she walked towards him and did physical damage to her own dog. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay not gonna like it and then he proceeds to try to lure her dog to him and listen yeah, yeah. you might still you might still feel that her behavior was uncalled for whatever that's up to you no 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 her behavior wasn't just uncalled for her behavior was completely un was completely out of out of whack and was actually racist saying i'm gonna if you don't i'm gonna walk up to you and then i'm gonna threaten you and i'm gonna say i'm gonna call the cops and tell them a black man is threatening me Fuck off. Fuck off. Fuck off. This is the reason why people are getting fucking tired of Anna Kasparian's bullshit. Why is Anna going to such an extra mile to be pieces a piece of shit? Because she knows that she's sitting here pitching to potentially new people who will throw her money because she did a little song and dance for their show, pandering to the right, peddling their racist narratives, and now peddling their anti-trans narratives. But you should know all those details. Is this an old clip of Anna? No, this is from literally three days ago. This was streamed three days ago. And I will Brand say from my new. personal opinion, if some random, if I'm alone at a park and some random guy tries to lure my dog away from me, I'm gonna freak out, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I just am. And so, okay, with the Rittenhouse story, 
I was going to cover the trial and I just needed to go back and just like really, really look at all of the details and remember all the details. So when I do the story, I, I get here we go. Don't fight it, Anna. Here's a donation from Adam and Sitch's chat. I'm just going to read this real quick. Don't fight it, Anna. Let the right wing institutions that burn deep in your soul guide you. Take the red pill. It's metallic sodium core will leave scarring, but you won't be sorry the facts right and then as i'm doing that i come across a new york times video and this was a really really well done video that they posted on youtube that showed you in, in slow motion like how everything transpired that night mm -hmm. and once you see it for yourself it's really really difficult to argue that in those moments he was not acting in self-defense and right. this is an area where you know jake and i disagree because you know if if someone's hitting you over the head with a skateboard, that could kill. That could kill you. That could kill you. You know. And so, you know, Jenk is a very he's a strong-minded person, and he's not one to back down from a fight. So, in his mind, you know, someone confronts you with a skateboard, he he doesn't see it as a threat. But I I do. And Rittenhouse is not a big burly guy who can like defend himself um, against someone who's like hitting him over the head with a skateboard as he's lying on his back. So right. once I saw all those details, first of all, I had to convey them to my audience and be honest about what the, what the reality was. The other thing was, you know, there was a lot of misreporting about how Kyle Rittenhouse was in possession of an illegal weapon and that he crossed state lines with that <laughs> oh, illegal no. weapon. Yeah, it definitely is fucking weird, Somniostatic, that she brings up two extremely racially charged examples first. She's literally walking to the fence-sitting liberal. This isn't fence-sitting liberal. She just opened the video by saying she doesn't know what her political label is anymore. This is blatant grifting to the right. Blatant grifting to the right. Bringing up Rittenhouse as your first example and then arguing over the, the most minor detail of the entire thing. I'm sorry, but the was it self-defense is like the least interesting part of the entire Rittenhouse situation. The strange part of the Rittenhouse situation is that a literal minor uh, was brought in with a pseudo militia group to defend a random gas station that he wasn't even asked to defend. They just came in to defend, armed defend during a racial rights protest and he shows up armed to the teeth that the entire all of the events leading up to that the fact that there are children being brought in and given weapons uh driven across state lines to go defend from rioters uh is a is a uh, a much more interesting portion of all of this than going back and forth onto whether the incident of the of the actual shooting was self defense uh, the fact that you set yourself up with a gun in a situation uh, almost almost designed to get yourself into a conflict, almost as if almost as if you and the groups that you were associated with were actively seeking out an opportunity to inflame a situation is, in my opinion, more interesting. But of course, uh, there's always going to be the sort of plausible deniability of going back and forth and being, well, technically, it was legally self-defense. Well, technically, there's all kinds of well technicallys you can do about everything. I mean, let's just, let's not forget the well technically people who came out about George Floyd. Well, technically, he was breaking a law, which means that it's okay that that somebody died, that somebody was murdered by a cop. stupid okay yep. so that was a lie and it's not a lie that i just made up in my mind right that was how it was reported initially which is why i would mention the state lines but not because oh how dare he cross state lines anyone in this country has the right to cross state lines it obviously obviously anybody has the right to cross state lines Crossing state lines as a minor with a weapon that you can't legally own to partake in a cop fantasy at a place that you know that there is go that there is currently unrest because of the unjustified murder of a black man. 
it was because it was reported that he was in possession of an illegal gun right. and he traveled across state lines with an illegal gun, which is a serious charge. But it turned out that he did not travel across state lines with that yeah, weapon. Yeah, he didn't he actually, do that. Yeah, the weapon right. was in, in the area already. Yeah. <laughs> well, technically, come the fuck on. Exactly. He bought it from a friend when he was already in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Sitch, yeah. Sitch, the night of that event, I mean, maybe a day afterwards, Sitch and I were watching those videos online as they were breaking out. And I saw the reporting w was basically wrong on CNN the night the viral videos were released. Don Lemon was saying... Even certified boomer Bill Burr said that the real issue was that Rittenhouse had no fucking business being there in the first place, let alone armed. It shouldn't be a hot take to say that. It isn't a hot take. But see, you can give yourself this idea of plausible deniability while you go out of your way to try it to publicly pander to the right who literally... Guys, can, can we not... Is there a memory hole going on at how the right wing treated Kyle Rittenhouse? How they've been sucking this guy's dick every single day for the last fucking three years, two years, since two and a half years since it happened? Like, they, it's insane. Let's not forget, that's like their favorite guy to bring up when they want to go, yeah, yeah, Cal Rittenhouse is a hero! Uh, you know, a, a white kid shoots into a crowd of Black Lives Matter protesters. And I'm like, what? Yep. That's insane. Yeah. So they kind of poison the narrative from the get-go. And mm -hmm. then everyone just kind of gets caught up in it. it yeah, and that's how misinforma misinformation spreads. And I've just, that was a pivotal moment for me. Because, again, I, misinforming the audience is not something I have any interest in. And I might give them the facts and they might not like it, but I can't withhold information from them because I'm afraid that they might not like it. So I'm going to mm -hmm. give them the facts. But, you know, I've learned to be better about, first of all, the, the sources I trust. I make an effort to just be cognizant of the filter bubbles we all exist in, the filter bubbles I exist in. And I've broken through that bubble a little bit to you know, look at other sources that I typically wouldn't have looked at. And then the other thing that I do now is I just wait. You know, I think the story involving the so-called city bike Karen is a good example of that. The main show, because TYT consists of many different shows, right? The show that I'm the executive the producer city and host of Karen? is the main flagship show, The Young Turks. Mm -hmm. And prior to that story breaking, I had a meeting with my team and I was like, listen, I don't want you guys pitching the city bike Karen wasn't that like a TikTok thing that blew, that like blew up and stopped in like two days. I I'm I I I'm I've heard of it, but I like did who who talked about it? The city bike Karen was clarified quite fucking quickly. Was it a major nationwide news event? Was it? It was dragged out for a whole week. It was pretty small. The Karen made a big statement. It caused a massive conservative uproar. Okay, guys, a massive conservative uproar is, is means nothing these days. They get mad for one day about everything. I think, I don't know, Do we didn't cover it, so that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I didn't cover it, so who cares? There you go. There you have it. That settles it. No, but honestly, I don't, I don't know if this is an example of, like, mass misinformation. It's also, let's just, um, real quick, real quick, hold on a second. Let's just remember, Anna Kasparian is citing the, uh, the City Bike Karen TikTok misinformation as an example of leftist misinformation. She just said, you gotta be careful about your bubble, and that's the leftist mis misinformation. Meanwhile, on the right, vaccine denial is one of the most popular uh, common beliefs. Uh, Anti-masking has been one of the most popular beliefs for the last three years. Uh, you wanna talk about a little bit 
a city bike b Karen is the best thing you can come up with? That's your idea of misinformation? Maybe just log off of TikTok a little bit more. G fucking newsflash, the right wing lives in an alternate reality. They're, they're calling every trans person who so much as takes in a breath of air a groomer. They're, they've spent the last few years denying vaccines to the degree that we have a we're having risk of fucking gold rush era diseases coming back in full swing because people aren't getting their kids vaccinated anymore. You want to talk about fucking misinformation? Stories about random individuals in the country who are caught in an out of context video, uh, allegedly behaving badly. I, I think these stories are divisive. I don't think we usually have the full details before we talk about these stories. And honestly, at the end of the day, engaging in these witch hunts is actually causing more division and hate in the country than anything else. So like, if there's a story that's particularly like jarring and you guys really do want to cover it, that's fine, but just understand that we are going to wait. Like we are not in the business of breaking news. I don't give a shit about being the first uh, in reporting the story or whatever. I wanna make sure that when we do, we actually report it correctly and we don't have an egg on our face later. Now there are a bunch okay. of other shows on the network that I have no say over, that I have no control over who, you know, inaccurately reported on it and uh, had to issue retractions. They had to take videos Wait, I'm sorry. You're a producer, aren't you? Like you're really high ranking there. You do actually have you're 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 doing what Jimmy Dore did and blaming other people. It's your network, aren't you? Aren't you like a producer for the entire network? Down and all that stuff. And I just think that was a teachable a moment. Hopefully a teachable moment Dorn for everyone in the company. But certainly, you know, this is an ongoing conversation I have with my team. And luckily, I don't know how I did it. I feel like I found unicorn producers because they're really smart super open-minded you know they're less interested in this left versus right or partisan garbage and they're more interested in making sure that if we're going to report stories we get it accurate oh um my and god. so we're, we're moving slowly but surely oh my god she's milking them so hard do you are you guys not ca is, is anybody else not catching how every other word out of her mouth right now is literally out of the fucking how I left the left playbook? Like, yeah, I brought on a bunch of rare producers who really care about they don't care about the right versus left. They care about the truth. That's what it's oh my this could be a Tim Pool segment. Direction Milking that I think that is audience. better. Not I got to give it to her. Girl boss in that right wing swing. Girl bossing the shit out of that. You got you got those points practiced and polished to a hone. To a to a honed sheen. That's what I meant. Get that fucking get that get that right wing bag. Hollow, hollow. Just melon ball your soul right out. For the show, but I think better in terms of like what we add to society. Mm -hmm. Like the last thing I want to do is be the other side of right-wing disinformation, right? Like, if we're going to be critical of disinformation we see happening in various videos and that are produced by other people, we should at least look inward a little bit and make sure that we're doing our due diligence. Yeah, it's, you know, it's interesting. Bro, you're... again, the right-wing in America has, like, a majority of people that no longer believe in the efficacy of masks, or vaccines, they, the right wing on mass, their most major figures are pushing anti-vaccine rhetoric. The, the right and the left, quote unquote, are not even on, they're not even in the same universe of misinformation. If the best thing that you can come up with is some TikTok Zoomers jumping the gun on a TikTok video about the city bike Karen, that's your best example of left wing misinformation, Fucking wake up. But again, remember, this is educational for us. This audience is there. They're coming their pants going. Yeah, we got another lefty. She's literally practiced these points. Saying how uh, with the media, a lot of the misinformation. Oh, yeah, she should. Oh, she did miss an opportunity. She should have brought up Hunter Biden. That would have been killer. Hunter Biden is like one of their big ones right now. But but that one might have gotten her in trouble because that one is so full of misinformation. 
See, she could have actually gotten in trouble with her network for that one. So maybe she's just doing ones they don't care about, you know? But that would have been the real milker. If she had hit on Hunter Biden, these guys would have done, they would have gone and subscribed to TYT immediately. Comes from, like, they leave stuff out. And I, that's been mm -hmm. my experience, too, is just this intentionally. Gen X Uncle, Uncle Key says, uh, she's been talking about and complaining about how much money the right has and that she doesn't have for years. This is a blatant crap cash grab. Yeah, I know. Anybody who's watched her show knows they talk about this shit all the time. It's like one of their main fundraising pitch is that the right, the right wing and the mainstream media get all the money. You got to give us money and support TYT if you want us to be able to fight back. Skull Muncher, hey Demon Mama, first time catching your stream live. I love your show. Thank you so much and welcome to chat. Everybody give Skull Muncher some, some cool hug emojis in chat and some love emojis in chat. Welcome to the, to the website chat. Happy to have you. This is a perfect opportunity, by the way. For those of you who are watching on the lovely YouTube side, did you know that I have a live chat, a cozy website chat at demonmama.com forward slash live? It's super easy to make an account on my site. It's free to join the chat and you can appear up on the screen and get all kinds of cool emojis and meet all kinds of cool people. Uh, we would love to have you on the site. We've been actually seeing a lot of new people come by the website, which is really awesome. And also, if you are here watching, please make sure that you're subscribed down below and that you press the like button because I would love to grow this channel. I put a lot of work into my show, keeping you all entertained and informed in as best as I can. So your love, your subscribes, your likes mean the world to me. Do I have to be an imp or can I be a succubus? You can absolutely be a succubus. The imp is just the general term for my fans. Let's continue. Leaving out of key information or the like the headline or the subsection will kind of frame something in a very specific way. So even when you get to like kind of the contradictory information, your mind is already like made up by that point. So it doesn't yeah. matter. Um, and so it leads to this kind of effect where like once a person See, like once that story hits that like you or me or anyone because I kind of went to the same experience where like once something hits me in a specific way like it's like I'm oh I'm free of the matrix suddenly I'm starting to see like things a little bit differently all the dominoes kind of start to fall and I say oh wait I start to see like where all the misinformation is coming from was the totally was the Rittenhouse thing like was that like the key moment or was there something else that kind of like oh. made you <laughs> shift your shift your thinking so that was one of the pivotal moments but mm -hmm. Honestly, I would say it. everything for me started when I started getting gaslit on the crime wave. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's really oh, interesting God. to talk about these various political issues in the abstract. But then once you personally experience something and once you see something happening in the country with your own two eyes and your political side is incessantly gaslighting you on it, what? It makes you question, well, what else are you guys? She like? loves the term gaslight because gaslight is one of those popular, it's one of those pop phrases that doesn't mean anything anymore because people just say it to mean whenever somebody disagrees with me, it means I'm being gaslit. Also, what she's referring to is that um, if I'm not mistaken, Anna Kasparian was the victim of a crime. By the way, I was also the victim of a crime. Many of you will know that my car got carjacked uh, and uh, and completely and utterly destroyed last year while we were moving. It was literally carjacked by people who took it for a joyride, went and did a drug deal that I witnessed and they, they left used crack pipes in our car. Um, and I still don't fucking, I'm not a fucking conservative. I'm, I, don't, I don't fucking think like homeless people need to be blown up. I didn't swing to the right. I just acknowledge that crimes can happen and that my political views are still correct, even though I had an anecdotally bad experience. By the way, just so we know, just so we keep the context in there, my car was stolen. We called it in as stolen. It, we, we caught it being stolen within five minutes of it being stolen. The cops didn't show up for an hour and a half and we were the ones who located the car. The cops only ended up two three days later actually three days not two three days later recovering the car from the property where it was being held we actually found the car we went and tracked it down we witnessed them doing a drug deal in their car in my car 
and I'm still not a fucking right winger because I still believe in my beliefs because the facts are still true even if I experience something bad. It's no fun to be the victim of a crime, but that doesn't suddenly make it less true uh, that crimes are tied directly to socioeconomic status, that over-policing doesn't fix things, that it actually makes crimes worse, that, that, that over-policing makes the likelihood of crimes go up. It doesn't actually protect you. Funding the police makes things worse because you live in an authoritarian society where people are uh, being broken by uh, having uh, stormtroopers covering every single corner of the world who are looking uh, at the world through a racially biased lens. All of those things are facts. That doesn't change even if I experience something extremely traumatic, like having our car literally stolen in front of us and destroyed while we were trying to move house. Sorry, guys. I didn't suddenly overnight turn into some sort of law and order fucking uh, Starship Troopers ass freak. Lying about. <laughs> or what else are you guys gaslighting about? And that's what happened. That, it's not gaslighting if people disagree with you. People disagreeing with your outcomes and your statements and your anecdotal bias does not make them gaslighting you. That's not gaslighting. So... You know, during the pandemic, there was absolutely a crime wave in the country. I didn't even, guys, I didn't even mention the time that I was fucking assaulted in my parking lot, in the parking lot of our, of our apartment. It's been a year and a half since that happened, since some fucking freak who was hopped up on drugs flipped the shit on me and punched me in the face. I didn't even bring that one up. I should have brought that one up. You can ask any of my partners, they'll tell you. I was walking back from my car after being out at, I mean, fuck, Gayfesh can tell you. I called and messaged Gayfesh afterwards because I came back from Gayfesh's house and I was getting my stuff from the car and some guy freaked out and hit me in the fucking face. And I still didn't become Robocop. I still don't believe that RoboCop would have done anything there. In fact, I know cops wouldn't have done shit there. Nothing could have stopped that from happening, except for maybe the world being a better place where that person didn't fucking feel the need to be violent. What did he do it for? He thought I was, he thought I was looking at him wrong because when I was walking past, I can tell you the story just out of, just so you guys know what happened. I was walking by uh, and uh, I heard a bunch of slams, like a head being slammed against glass in a car. So there's a car in the parking lot, and I see the car going like this, and I hear slams of a head against glass, and I hear a woman screaming. And I, I understandably looked over and got freaked out. And, um, and... Uh, and I was looking over because I s heard somebody screaming inside of a car, and this the, the door flew open, and, uh... This, this woman inside the car just started sc just screaming at me, fuck off, fuck off, go, fucking get out of here. And I said, what the fuck's your problem? Why the fuck are you screaming and slamming shit? Is all I said, right? And then this guy comes flying out of the car, little dude, right? And he just walks right up and gets all mad at me and just fucking sucker punches me right in the face and immediately runs and hides behind his girlfriend who starts profusely apologizing to me. She's like, don't do it, don't fucking do it because I was ready to fucking crunch this guy. I was, I, I was like, I'm not kidding you. I'm, I'm six two, okay? This guy was tiny, okay? And he's literally hiding behind his girlfriend and I walked over and I'm like, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna fucking kick your ass. And she's like, please, please, I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to get you involved in this. I'm so sorry, please. I said, fuck you, get the fuck out of here. And then I just walked inside, picked up my glasses off the ground and walked inside. I'm not even kidding you, he didn't take me down or anything. Like, I'm big, he hit me in the face and I just, I just shook it off. I was absolutely ready to fucking kick his ass. But, still not Robocop. Still not fucking Robocop. That, 
dude, dude, by the way, got saved by his girlfriend because I would have kicked his fucking ass. Fucking sucker punching me for no reason because he was beating his girlfriend in the car. I'm sure his life is worse than mine. Wow, Washington seems so pleasant. Uh, Washington is great, but uh, for a while I lived in a really, like one of the highest crime areas of this region. It's just where we ha that's just where we could afford to live. When I started streaming, I mean, right now I make just enough that we've been able to get a place that can, you know, we have a, a lot, we have a house, you know, we moved a few neighborhoods over and we have a house now and it's nice. I'm not rich now, not even close, not even close to rich. We just have enough, we have four people in our polycule. You know, we all, we needed a place that was bigger, but the place that we lived at the time was in a really rough neighborhood, a neighborhood that is severely, severely over-policed for all the wrong reasons. They're looking to harass people and, and target druggies that look bad. It's, it's tragic how our system makes the most dangerous places the cheapest to live. Well, of course, that's just how it works. It, when you have a, a yeah, that's, that's how it works. But anyway, that's where we used to live. Washington as a whole is pretty nice, but the truth is bad things can happen to you anywhere. Guys, hold on. Let me tell you another story, okay? Because I feel like, I feel like when I used to live in, in the beautiful state of Maine, um, uh, uh, I once was working on a small film project with my friends. And we were filming at a public beach. And um, my friend was uh like a you know he he was from the town that we were in and some dude who knew him from high school i'm and i'm talking like my friend was like 35 so he hadn't been in high school a long time um some guy who saw him and and thought he knew him from high school t completely misinterpreted what my friend was saying and thought that he was saying some bullshit like, I don't even, I don't even understand. This guy was, I'm not kidding you, methed the fuck out, okay? The guy was, this guy was uh, taller than me, probably like 6'3", fat as fuck, okay? This guy was a, a, a ham man, okay? Big, fat, sweaty meth head um, starts freaking out on my friend, okay? Absolutely fucking freaking out on my friend. And we're like, we're out of here. Fuck this shit. So my friend's like, I don't want to shoot this shit anymore. Fuck this guy. This guy knows me from years ago and he's freaking out on me. He thinks I'm doing some shit. Nothing. It's completely insane. The guy was just losing his shit. So I grab my camera and I start walking back from the beach through the woods to my car. And I turn around and I notice this fucking fat, fat meth head freak is following me. Okay. And I'm like, I'm in the woods away from the beach and away from my car and this guy's fucking following my ass okay and he comes up to me and he starts screaming at me he starts going i'm just gonna uh, he, he starts calling me a f he says he's like oh you're fucking you fucking art school ass fucking faggot i'm gonna drown your ass i'll drag you over to the beach and fucking drown you i'm like bro what the fuck is your fucking problem i don't even know who the fuck you are what the fuck is your problem? He's like, you don't fucking think you own the beach. I'm like, we were minding our own fucking business, man. You're the one who's freaking out. Dude's red in the face, completely irrational. And and then, and then he's like getting up in my face. And I say, all right, buddy, this is it. You have one last fucking chance. Get the fuck out of my face or I bash you in the head with this camera stand. And he goes, all right, fuck you, fuck you. He backs off and I walked away. That was it. That was it. And I never saw him again. And it was in a rural area. And it was a meth head white guy. A crime can happen to you anywhere. A dude can lose their fucking ma mind over anything. They can just lose their fucking brain over shit. You never know. No matter where you live.
And it's especially true when you have a country th where rural areas are devastated by opioid and meth addiction because there's absolutely no psychological services, there's no addiction services, there's massive poverty, there's nothing for them to do, jobs have left their region, so they're, de they're, dying, they're dying of despair, which is literally what it's called in a legal sense, deaths of despair. When uh, many, many areas in the city are stricken with poverty and over-policed over for all the wrong reasons. As it turns out, bad things can happen to you when you live in a country like the United States. Actually, where you live anywhere. But that doesn't give you a right to become fucking RoboCop and believe that people need to be uh, treated inhumanly. Or that you start subscribing to irrational, fear-based politics. What's the worst fight that I've been in? Probably one that I was in in high school. A guy punched me in the stomach and it hurt. He sucker punched me in the stomach because he thought I did something, but it was actually another member of my friend, my gr group of friends who pu they, pulled a pr they pulled a prank on him and he thought it was me for some reason. And so he just sucker punched me in the stomach and it hurt really bad. And then I ended up beating the shit out of him. Anyway, yep. I mean, my friends were being assholes, to be fair, but I didn't know that they pulled a prank on some random fucking asshole, and he had no right to fucking sucker punch me in the stomach. In high school, I was like, I was a, I was like, I was a lot stronger than I looked, but I was a really quiet nerd. I didn't really talk to anybody. Uh, and there were multiple times where I got hit in high school and never did anything back. Um, but that time I did. Um, I had been, I, I got, somebody hit me in the head with a, with a math book once really hard just because they thought they could push me around. Uh, another kid slapped me in the face once for no reason. I don't really know why. He just wanted to tr try and like, I got bullied in high school. Regardless, all of this shit uh, is is to say uh, all of this is to say I have been the victim of literal violence sometimes completely random violence other times misunderstandings where people overreacted um, and that doesn't give you a just that doesn't give you the right to to become uh, a, a super villain or to act like you are or to support a mass incarceration because you're personally scared or because you have some traumas. A lot of us have traumas. A lot of us have experienced bad things. And guess what? To bring it back to the topic at hand, because this is a complete and utter distraction, although I think you, it's more valuable uh, overall, let's just remember that at the end of the day, it doesn't make, it, it doesn't give you, I can't even remember what I was to say. It doesn't give you the right to fucking grift to the right. All right, everybody, let's fucking get back to this stupid fucking reaction. This is why we watch you. I know. I know this is why you watch me because I tell you stories about my life and I talk fucking real and from the heart and I don't do this fucking PR speech bullshit. Don't fucking grift to the right just because you had a bad thing happen to you. A lot of us have trauma. Doesn't mean you can be wrong. Mostly in like major cities. Los Angeles happened to be one of them. And you know, I, I talked about how I, you know, was assaulted. Well, actually, let me give you the details again because there's an element to that story that I've never shared with anyone Hold that on. also explains where my head's at now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as I was walking my dog one day, there were these two guys, they appeared to be homeless, they appeared to be on something, they looked like they might be messed out or something, because they were kind of acting erratically. But you know, typically, when I come across guys like that, if I ignore them, they won't do anything, right? That wasn't the case this time around, you know, they're coming toward me. And Char my dog, Charlie, like he does his business. And as I bend over to pick up his business, one of them grabs me by my hips and just like with an erection and everything just starts like humping me like wow. right there in like broad daylight and right. it was terrifying because like i didn't have any weapon with me that is terrifying and that's fucking terrible okay maybe it was good that i talked about what i've been through recently no taser no pepper spray nothing mm -hmm. and wow. and luckily the guy he did that and then 
he and his friend walk away while they're like laughing at me. And if I felt so degraded, scared. Yeah. And for the record, that's fucking degrading and scary. That's absolutely degrading and scary. Like the first thing I did is I called my husband and he came down and he's like, where are they? And he started looking for them. We couldn't find them. Um, the cops w wouldn't come. Like we actually had an incident in front of our um, building like a few weeks prior to that. That was really scary. We called the police and the police just wouldn't come. <laughs> it was amazing. And wow. now in retrospect, I realized the reason why is because there was a shortage. And I think that there was like an unofficial. No. It's not because of a fucking shortage. It's because the cops never come for shit like that. They don't care. It's the same reason why they showed up an hour and a half after I reported fucking Grand Theft Auto. It's why it took them three days when we had already told them the location of our car that they didn't fucking recover it for three days. It's because they don't fucking care. They have things that make them money. They have things that they care about. They're all wrapped up in the war on drugs. They don't care about your problems. They don't care about my problems. This has never been, funding has nothing to do with it. I'm gonna tell you another joke, okay? This is a joke, okay? But it's based off of a true story. But it was a joke that, you, that, that I used to be told a lot by my best friend's grandpa about a time that they had a home invasion in rural Maine. And he would always tell in a joking light, so we never knew exactly how true it was. But this is a story that, that, that uh, this punchline, you probably may have, if you live in a rural area, you probably have heard somebody say this. Home invasion, call the cops. Cops don't show up. Wait 20 minutes. Call the cops again. There's somebody broken into my house. Get out here. Get out here right now. Cops don't call. Call him a third time. I just shot and killed a burglar. He's dead on my floor. And then the cops show up in five minutes. You guys, some of you may have heard that type of joke or that type of story before. The idea that the cops don't care about these types of crimes is not exactly an old concept. It's not exactly an old thing. It's a it's a well-known thing to the degree that it is broken into pop culture for, for, for generations in most rural areas, okay? Rural area cops don't have a hard time getting funding, okay? They're doing pretty damn good as far as funding is concerned. It's just that that's not what cops are told to go after especially since the drug war era. In the drug war era, the cops care about drugs. That's where they get their funding. They get those pictures of them standing with a perpetrator and all the drugs spread out on the table, then the funding rolls in. That's what they care about. That's where they put their money. And then the other part is their fucking tickets. They love those fucking traffic tickets because that's easy money. Low danger, high reward for the, for the uh, department. It's all about the fucking money. Is this Anna's first reaction interaction with the police? Probably. I've told you guys in the past, my experience is getting fucking harassed by rural police. So let me tell you, I, I've lived, as you guys can tell, I've lived a pretty interesting life. But uh, I got harassed like fuck by the police when I was younger, okay? If your first run-in with the police is cops coming late to the party for your for your incident, that's honestly a good first run-in with the cops, let me tell you. And again, I want to be 100% clear here. What Anna went through, the whole reason why I told my stories just a few minutes ago is because I completely under, under, understand how fucking terrible it feels to be the victim of a fucking crime, of any crime, let alone a fucking sexual crime, which I've told that story on stream before. But that doesn't mean that you have to go RoboCop. That doesn't mean that it's correct to go, to, 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 to suddenly start arguing that we need to explode funding for the cops. It just doesn't, that's just not how it works. It's, and it's also, it's the definition of an anecdotal thing. It, is, it doesn't diminish that you suffered to say, but that conclusion isn't correct. 
You know how many people justify racism by, uh, by talking about a bad experience they had sometime? They say, oh, I, I had a crime done to me by somebody of that race. And then they become a racist? That doesn't make them right to be a racist. Strike, considering what happened in 2020 and all the... Jessica Metal says, I was arrested and thrown into a men's jail as a trans woman for trying to get an abusive man to leave my house and stop beating my cousin. Still not a right-wing shill over it. Based. Based of you for saying strong. And I'm sorry you had to go fucking through that. Mm -hmm. Protest. So, so they just wouldn't show up. And I just didn't even think to call the cops because I'm like, what's the point? These guys have already like left and they're not going to be able to find them. But anyway, I, I opened up about that. And I also started opening up about you know, just what the statistics were indicating in regard to crime and how it's obviously having a negative impact on all communities, but mostly the communities that like BLM and, and leftists claim to care so much about the disadvantaged uh, communities, you know, crime on the metro system in LA has been unbelievable. And the majority of people who take the metro who take bus buses and public transportation, they're usually like, has anyone done a transvestigation on Anna? Oh, Jesus. Wow, the, the really awesome, really awesome chat they got going on here. Making jokes about, uh, making jokes about her situation. Jesus Immigrant Christ. workers, they're usually, you know, blue collar workers who, you know, don't have enough money to buy a car, for instance. And so I was like, why are you guys cool with just having these people deal with this kind of violence. There was like a, a phase last year where people were literally being set on fire randomly on wow. buses. Jeez. And that would get no attention, no news coverage, and it would infuriate me. And so when I opened- Did it really get no news coverage? Is that really true? Or maybe it just, cause I feel like that probably gets a lot of news coverage. How the, how the hell, also, did you cover it? I don't know. Uh, I've seen, yeah, the chat has been spending most of this saying uh, that, that oh, wow, Anna's hot. I uh, love Anna's face, hate her opinions, all this kind of stuff. But, you know, whatever, who cares? It's their stupid, shitty chat. Opened up about what happened to me in my own neighborhood. Um, what I thought was telling was how everyone, not everyone, but some people accuse me of pushing racist stereotypes. But I had never ever disclose the race of these two individuals ever yeah mm -hmm. but they just assumed that, they were that these two guys were black but is that is that what people were accusing you of racial stereotypes for or was it perhaps other things that you said i don't know we have to again she's just recounting to us what people said quote unquote on twitter so okay they wow. weren't black they were two white guys but like, I never shared that publicly because I didn't think the race really mattered, right? What actually happened mattered. And I thought the reaction to it by the people who were supposed to allegedly want dignity for everyone reacted to it. Like that really bothered me. So that was the beginning of it. I would say that's what started me questioning everything and wanting to like look deeper into everything. And then other things happened. So um, the misrepresentation of what was happening to Asian Americans. So there would be all these videos of Asian Americans getting sucker punched or hit over the head with, you know, whatever. And Uncle Gumball with the tier two subscription, Olay comes in on the Vanguard after they reacted to this. It's only a couple minutes and it's great. All right, I'll keep that open. Maybe we'll react to it afterwards. I wanna, I wanna continue this. The, the main narrative on the left was, this is anti-Asian hate, yeah. but it, but actually, if you look at all of those stories individually, it usually involved like a repeat criminal or uh -huh. someone who's just been left on the streets with severe mental health issues. Like people basically carrying out these acts of violence because they don't have their head in the right place. No, I don't think that's true. The mainstream, the mainstream left when they were talking about anti-Asian crimes was not talking about random punching incidents, to my knowledge. They were talking about the statistics that showed that Asian businesses were being targeted, Asian individuals were being targeted for hate crimes, that Asians were being called slurs in the streets uh, following Donald Trump's insane behavior around COVID, blaming China all the time and saying Chinese people were coming to get you. I don't, 
to my knowledge, I don't remember anybody saying that it was because of random videos that they saw on the internet. It was because of stats. It's been elevated since 2020. It's ongoing. Th this is just stupid. This is just her whining. Is, like, this, just entire it segment, as, oh, this entire it's... segment has been her whining about some people on Twitter said something and then her framing it as the mainstream left narrative with no citations. Just a massive citation needed. This whole thing has just been citation needed. Oh yeah, and of course, Nuts, as Nuts points out, they have barely talked at all. They're just sitting there letting her, they're going, yeah, oh yeah. Have you guys ever seen, we've reacted to like two Adam and Sitch uh, segments in the history of this entire show. But anybody else who's familiar with Adam and Sitch, have you guys ever seen them be so such dick suckers? They're just like, oh, wow, wow, yeah, you're so amazing. It's so good. You're such a truth-telling centrist. Incredible. They're just like, oh, yeah, this is perfect. They know. They know. Well, she's milking them, to be fair. I'll give them that. She's just absolutely milking the whole audience just anti-Asian uh, hate that's been inspired by the right wing. Most of the time, these guys can't shut the fuck up. Remember that time he watched the TJ one and they were just jumping down his throat constantly? Another bored person with the $5 super chat says, step one, collect anecdotes. Step two, question, question, question. Step three, profit. Unironically. It just wasn't true. Yeah. And, you know, I just thought it was wrong to, to frame it that way when in reality there was a real issue with you know repeat offenders and in some cases people with severe mental health issues honestly ra randomly targeting all sorts of people but you know since a lot of this was happening in in areas like san francisco where there's a sizable asian population the narrative on the left became oh it's just anti-asian hate that's been inspired by the right and i just didn't really see much evidence of that i, um, I don't i don't believe that, there that was, was i don't believe that that was the left-wing narrative I believe that the left-wing narrative, quote-unquote, was based on statistics that have been well-established showing that crimes in general against Asian Americans have gone up, including hate crimes, including hate graffiti shit, and not just, not just random punching incidents. I'm sure, I'm sure somebody somewhere at some point uh, uh, talked about these as perhaps one example, but I don't believe that this is like the narrative. I just, I don't believe it the attacks on straight news journalists who were doing their jobs for instance when lee fong was reporting on the blm protests uh for he was when he was accurately reporting on the blm protests and some of the violence that took place during those protests uh his own colleagues at the intercept tried to paint him as a racist i've known lee fong for many many years since i started working at tyt guy doesn't have a racist bone in his body for them to paint him in that way I thought was disgusting and it was a it had a chilling effect right the whole point paint him? is to Again, intimidate just another random example with no citations like what did some people say that they felt like he was being racist what is who who did this who what where when you're just saying some his his colleagues painted him as a racist and it had a chilling effect okay journalists from All doing accurate reporting place. on what's actually occurring on the ground then there was what happened to Jesse Single, which I found disgusting. I didn't know about that until... Wait, what happened to Jesse Single exactly? I want to find out what happened to Jesse Single. Just for record, Jesse Single is the guy who pushed that fucking fraudulent ass story. Uh, he was like the main guy. Um, hold on. He was the one pushing that insane... University of, of Washington uh, bullshit from his substack. Jesse Single has been fu J Jesse Single is a fucking lying piece of shit. He's like the he's like the laundromat of the turf movement where he tries to make them seem legitimate by just asking questions and by by latching on to any deranged parent even when the the children and the other parent disagree even when there's no evidence there he'll latch on to a parent being like they trans my kid they trans my kid he pushed that shit all over the place
So what happened to Jesse Single exactly? Because to my knowledge, Jesse Single is doing just fine, pushing his bullshit, getting jerked off, uh, and given a bunch of money by TERFs. What exactly happened? At some point this year, I would say earlier this year. With the mm -hmm. trans stuff? Jesse's yeah. been on the show before. Yeah, he's done wow. great. What a Single surprise. Wow. A wow, you mean Jesse Single went on a right-wing podcast? Wow. Yeah. Good faith. I think critical thinker. I, 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 I'm subscribed to Blocked and Reported. I have listened to endless podcast episodes uh, from Blocked and Reported. I haven't seen anything from Jesse Single that communicates to me that he is a transphobe, that he is a bad person. Jesse Single posted uh, fucking fraudulent statistics about the increase. Uh, in trans people self-reporting their trans status, and he said that it was evidence that a uh, that a, a gender ideology was uh, was was taking over, and that it was going to continue to uh, to to double until everybody thought they were trans. Jesse Single pushed just the most deranged shit you can about trans people. Jesse Single has been pushing for years the idea that like the gender ideology, with no evidence, is grooming children into becoming trans Jesse single is abs is the people who criticize Jesse single for being transphobic aren't coming out of left field by saying that and also he's still successful so a whole lot of good uh, 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 that cancellation so much did the gender demic shit he's been all over the fucking social contagion shit yeah, he also posted private information of trans patients. That was a part of the whole, I believe that was a part of the whole UW situation, wasn't it? What a fucking piece of shit. There's a good, very good reason why people call Jesse Single uh, transphobic. Hold on real quick. I just want to... Um, hold on. Um... One second, one second. I'm thinking of something. You need to give me just one second here. Who was it who wrote? Someone wrote a piece by piece takedown of Jesse Singles claims. It was, um, why am I blanking on her name? Trans writer, uh, hold on, I think, uh, no, not, who am I thinking of? Who am I thinking of? Why am I blanking on her name? Not Aaron Reed. Not Aaron Reed. Although Aaron Reed may have done that as well. Julia Serrano. Julia Serrano wrote a whole thing on this. Hold on. Here we go. A statement on Jesse Single canceling and, deactiva canceling and deactivating my twin Twitter account. On, on December 5th, 2017, I penned a blog post called My Jesse Single Story, which chronicled bad experiences I had in online settings with singles circa 2016 to 2017. On July 20, 28, 2018, Single insinuated that one of the claims I made from a previous piece was hysterical, so I responded to that incident in another post. Since the summer of 2018, I have not shared either of those links or publicly raised these matters again. I seriously want nothing more than for Jesse Single to leave me alone. On March 20, on March 14th, 2021, without any provocation on my part, Single attempted to relitigate those 2016 to 2018 incidents on his Substack, misrepresenting my claims in the process. On March 20, on March 16th, 2021, I updated my story to address his recent mis misinterpretations and to link to a series of other incidents where Single has harassed and or tried to smear the reputation of other trans women writers. This was intended to show that this is a general pattern for him, rather than just my complaints being an outlier. On March 17th, 2021, Single sent me a letter about these events. Um, in my response, I said, there is nothing I want more than to let these back and forths go. And I largely had. If you wanted to let what happened between us between 16, 2016 and 2018 go, I would be more than happy to never bring those incidents up again. In his response, he seemed to agree. 
On March 18th, 2021, some rando on Twitter tagged me into a Bari Vice tweet in which uh, she shared a just published Jonathan K. Collette article defending Single. In that article, K. Re reiterated all of Single's one-sided renditions of what happened to us uh, between us in 2016 to 2018. I don't know if Single knew this piece was in the works. If he did, I consider it a breach of our previous agreement to de-escalate things. So this is just a statement, but you can actually go and read the full story with all citations, including, um, uh, including Jesse Single, uh, including uh, Julia Serrano going into some of his claims about trans issues. This is a pretty fantastic rundown of how obsessed Jesse Single is when it comes to going after individual trans people. Also, the the body of his work is obsessed with targeting uh, the this idea of a of like a gender contagion spreading throughout. Uh, the doctors are trying to prey on 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 trans kids and turn them into or, or gender confused kids and turn them into trans people. I just wanted to be clear uh, about that. I recognize the uh, the post that I just read wasn't the it, it has the link to it, so I'll provide those links real quick in chat in case anybody wants to go read the full story there behind those because I feel like. Uh, I feel like that's a, a pretty important thing. Here, I'm going to grab these three real quick. Let me drop those in chat. When when people say that Jesse Single is a, a transphobe, it's not just out of the blue. It's not some deranged uh, uh, nonsense. And also, most of the people who've attempted to, to disagree with Jesse Single have done so without calling him a transphobe. They have done so on the basis of his writings, which are bullshit, OK? There you go. There's some of those. Let's continue. Let's continue. We got to get through this. I can't stop on every one. We got to go. He did straight news reporting on basically what, you know, some of the risks could. No, he did not do fucking straight news reporting. That is bullshit. This guy is a fucking editorialist. This dude just fucking writes on a blog. He didn't do straight news reporting on anything. That's fucking, oh my God. B, I can't when it stand comes this to transitioning shit. literal kids, uh, with puberty blockers and then transitioning little kids as if there's no aspect of consent whatsoever as if this isn't a doctor patient relationship there's no kid that is forcibly trans you fucking freak fuck Anna Kasparian Prostate holy hormones. shit and through his reporting which I'm very sad to say I didn't really come across until this year I learned that I was wrong about a bunch of other things, right? So for instance, it is a lie that puberty blockers are reversible. In some cases, they are not, and they can cause irreparable harm. And <sighs> look, you might think there is no drug that is 100% reversible all the time, obviously. That is not even fucking Tylenol is reversible all the time. When people are talking about puberty blockers being reversible, which they are, it's because in the majority of cases, the purpose of a puberty blocker is to delay puberty, which is reversible because you can stop taking the puberty blocker and puberty will resume. Now, is it possible that there are negative effects? That is true of nearly any medication on the planet, some of which are sold over the counter without a prescription. You guys don't want to, you want to, you guys want to know how many people have hurt themselves with Benadryl, have hurt themselves with Tylenol, have hurt themselves with over the counter medications of many types? There is no 100% safe drug. When people are talking about the reversibility of puberty blockers, they are talking about the the data that exists, the general case. And of course, I should also reiterate that when, when children are prescribed puberty blockers, the majority of people who are, pre are prescribed puberty blockers are cis. Historically, the vast majority of people prescribed puberty blockers are not trans, but are cis and are getting them for one reason or another, usually for precocious puberty. Nobody gave a shit then. This is done with a medical professional. This is done with consultation of parents and consultation of the patient. This is done on an informed basis. Nobody is being, nobody is forcing kids to take puberty blockers. 
Anna Kasparian is full of shit and is now just straight up repeating right wing disinformation. Okay, but you got to do a balancing act. And if someone, if a child or if a teenager has severe gender dysphoria and it would actually be better for that person to go on puberty blocks, okay, I mean, we should be able to balance that out. But my. That's what doctors are doing, you fucking idiot. You're the person undoing that balance. That is already being balanced out by medical professionals with their patients. People like Jesse Singal and now yourself are the ones undoing that balance. You are trying to just ask questions and fear monger your way into misinformation legitimately for no reason. Yes, let's not forget, of course, um, let's not forget that the right wing is absolutely getting devastated right now in the courts because there is no reliable information showing that there is an actual danger, uh, a meaningful danger from these puberty blockers. They're getting owned in court because they lied, because they fear mongered, because people like Anna Kasparian and Jesse Singal and the rest of these right wing grifters are acting on prejudice because they are acting on prejudice about trans people. They are fear mongering about trans people and they are not doctors and they are not reporting accurately on what doctors are doing. This is bullshit. Point here is withholding the information because you don't like the information getting out there ain't the way to go because that destroys any opportunity That's not for what us anybody's to actually- That's doing. No one has done that. No one is saying that whatsoever. People are pointing out that, the rep that people like Singal misrepresent the data and fear monger that they misrepresent the risks in the name of pushing a prejudiced agenda. Have a good faith debate about what we should do moving forward. What are the pros and cons? So mm -hmm. there's that, you know, all of this stuff just, it started adding up. And through listening to Blocked and Reported, I found out I got a lot of stories wrong as well. Rebecca Jones ended up being a liar and a grifter. And oh, I yeah. wouldn't have known that. I wouldn't have known that had I not you know, opened my mind up to other voices. Rebecca Jones was the one that went after DeSantis, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And she, she's a complete liar. And we uplifted her, we enabled her, and I feel disgusting that we did that. So I issued a retraction um, and a correction on that story. I don't I know what the reaction that. was. <laughs> uh, my reaction was good. <laughs> Yeah. What what um, what is what is some of what uh -huh. is some of the reaction? Like what one of the problems? Oh, I think that Rebecca Jones is the person who um, uh, who accused uh, 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 Ron DeSantis of um, of uh, suppressing COVID information. I think. I don't know what that has. I don't know what any of this has to do with tra with trans issues. We often have, you know, obviously well, we're labeled right wingers issues? all the time. Or Anyone whatever. who watches our show uh, mm -hmm. knows we're pretty much like disaffected liberals. <laughs> like to oh, call really? to call us right wing is just, I mean, it's kind of laughable. But we are. No, it's fucking not, dude. Why do they do this? This is one of the things that I hate the most. I, I knew they're gonna. I know they're gonna get super mad that I call them a right wing podcast. Ninety percent of their takes are right wing. They're not. There's no disaffected liberals going on here. Nobody is in illusion about this, especially not their chat. Well, I don't know why it's cowardice. That's why it's because it's not uh, it's because if they pretend that they're centrists, then they can they can lure in people who aren't sold on the right wing or who people who have the, the right wing has a bad reputation. Let's just put it like that. I mean, there's a reason, by the way, why uh, conservatives are always coming up with ridiculous new names for themselves that don't actually mean any difference, like the difference between like a paleocon, an alt-right, a neo, uh, a, a neo-reactionary, uh, a, a alt-light. Um, uh, what's the next one? What's the new one? Uh, what's the one that's after the alt-right? They have another term for it. They're always coming up with new w ways to be like, no, I'm not that. These guys are right wing. I'm sorry. I just, I don't care. They can be mad about it all they want. They can deny that they're right wing, but we've watched them. We've listened to their takes. Their takes are consistently right wing. Sorry.
dissident right there you go they've always got a new name every other day because they make their na their names look so bad everybody dis distanced themselves from the alt right after charlottesville happened because charlottesville took their mask off you guys know about the mask off thing right like masking on they always say never reveal your power level that's a far right saying and the reason why they say that is because they know that people are turned off by the far right so they hide their power level like little fucking cowards they hide behind fake names and they say no, I'm just asking questions. It's fundamentally cowardly, and they all do this. Do you guys remember? Um, and and it, they eventually drop it inevitably. It does eventually fall off for most of these people. They will eventually, and they also slip up a lot of the time. Do you guys remember when Sargon of Akkad used to d insist on being called a uh, classical liberal before then, of course, he gleefully accepted being a member of the alt-right, gleefully accepted becoming a part of a far-right party and ran for that far-right party. But for a long time, he insisted that you call him a classical liberal. Come on. We're constantly called right-wingers just because we don't straw man the arguments that are made on the right. And so many people on the <laughs> left. No, no dude, it's because of the arguments you make. Nobody is calling you a right winger because you don't straw man the arguments. They're calling you right wingers because you present right wing arguments. All they are familiar with is the strong, the straw man version of the trans issue or, or some particular news story. So what is some of the what's the, what's the non straw man version of the trans issue? The, the right the, the right wing at large, the GOP, just spent the last three months fucking obsessed with a Broadway star TikTok influencer because she had her face on a beer can as part of a tiny ad campaign with Bud Light. I'm sorry, there, there's no, like, what's the non-straw man version of that? I'm, I'm sorry. Sargon was in chat this stream with Anna. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. Not right wing though. We're not right wing. Tee hee. The reaction that you have gotten to that. No one buys this shit. Well, I mean, the reaction has not been great. Um, <laughs> I mean, look, that leftist mafia stream was unbelievable to me. Like the accusations that were thrown out there. Um, Olay imp implying that I'm... I'm racist because as a woman, I don't want to be called a birthing person. Like that has, I mean, race didn't come up at all until she brought it up. And then she, I mean, she was the only one on that stream who brought race into it and like made it abundantly clear that she's got an issue with white women and just thinks they're all the same and like, you know, whatever. <laughs> and then, and then after I basically called her out on it, she's like, Oh, you're attacking me and only me because I'm black. And it's like, no, you're the only one attacking in that group of people yeah. who attacked me and accused me of being racist because notice how, um, notice that notice the, the, the way that the leftist mafia stream has been misrepresented. So apparently the only person attacking her was Olay, but the whole leftist mafia stream was uh, her getting gaslit and it was totally crazy, but it was only Olay who was doing it, right? So which one is it? Was was the leftist mafia all going in on you or was it just one of them? Which one is it? Because what I saw and what we all saw when we reacted to that stream, when we watched it on this stream, what we all saw was a bunch of people being super gentle with you and one of them called you on your bullshit a little harder than the rest and you had a fucking mental breakdown on Twitter over it. Despite the fact that this is a tiny, tiny channel and you're a gigantic channel with a huge voice, you freaked out because one of them was a little too harsh on you. And you've since used that incident to paint everybody else who was baby gloving you. Everybody else who was giving you very clear, simple, and kindly worded critique to act as though oh, everyone's attacking me and I'm the victim here. This is just so pathetic. Because I personally want to be called a woman. So, mm -hmm. I mean... Yeah, apparently I'm, apparently I'm missing the multiverse technology necessary to be able to self-gaslight. Uh, if, if Anna's going to use gaslight, I'm just going to say she's gaslighting herself about this. This is self-gaslighting. We're playing fast and loose with the word gaslight today. Self-gaslighting. There you go. I'm not sure it that they fully understand the damage that accusation can do. 
And, and if they do, oh, that they that makes it even more. They understand. Oh, okay. They understand. That, I mean, that oh, makes. Oh yeah, what damage? Anna, no, Olay say, saying that she saying shit, saying shit about you, criticizing you, whatever, didn't do shit. The only damage that's been incurred in this entire situation has been from yourself doubling down and being an asshole to all of the people who who actually tried to reach out to you. You could have ignored all of this and it would have been just fine. You're bleeding your own supporters because your own supporters can see that you are bullshitting and now you're going on little right wing podcasts and crying about how everything's bad and how you you're you you don't have a place on the political spectrum anymore. It's even more horrible. I think she published a video of you that was you uh, saying the N word. And it was back <laughs> when you know YouTube didn't have this big prohibition on saying the N word, and you weren't. It, it's not like you were calling people the N word. You were using right. it, quoting stories. So all of these. Wait, did she say politically homeless? Did I miss that? Dear God. If if Anna if Anna Kasparian is politically homeless, you better hope to God. <laughs> she better hope to God there's better policies than the ones that she generally supports for homeless people. <laughs> Holy shit! Did she actually say that? <laughs> Damn. Oh man, hope they don't break down her political encampment. Holy fucking shit. Do you think she's testing the waters by going on a tiny podcast like she plans to make the jump to more official stuff later? This is no, this is her getting the word out because Adam and Sitch are well plugged in in the right wing sphere. So she goes on Adam and Sitch, who are like a medium sized right wing podcast, and then the word goes out that she's going on podcasts. So yeah, she'll get all the invitations after this. Just watch. It's going to happen. It's inevitably going to happen. This is, this is the, it's not even just like a, it's not even just like a, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess, I guess the way you worded it is works just fine. It's, it's, it's. This is, this is the signal. It's saying, hey, everybody, here's the easy one. I know these guys are gonna softball me, and that I can pitch to their audience really easily. Get the word out that all of your connections. If Sargon's in chat, if you got, you got actual Justice Warrior in there. Actual Justice Warrior was just on Tim Pool. Yeah, she said politically homeless. Wow, what an unfortunate choice of words on her part. Uh, are taken out of context, which is completely unfair. Yeah, I mean, look, um, so it's really funny because that compilation video wasn't made by her. Uh, if you guys remember, at some point last year, everyone was going after Rogan for saying the N-word. And Wait, so they just, they just fucking did misinformation and she just rolled right by it. They were like, Olay made a video about you saying the N-word when that's not even true. She didn't even make the video. Incredible. So someone, someone on the left had made a compilation video of all the times he had said the N-word on his podcast. And then in response to that, someone on the right made a compilation of all the times like I had said the N-word, right? <laughs> or me and Jenk had said the yeah. So someone on the right made that video. Uh -huh. And we all, look, we had a company meeting the producers, everyone, we got together, and this is like years and years ago. The last time we actually uttered that word on air was in 2012. But we, we sat down and we talked about whether we should actually say the word when we're quoting someone that we are condemning as racist, or should we sanitize it and say N-word instead? And so we had a vote and we decided at the time that it was better to, to actually read the quotes verbatim as opposed to sanitizing it. And uh, I knew it would eventually come back to bite me in the ass. And it did. And you know, I don't really, I'm not going to apologize for it because context matters, intention matters. And what, what people like Olay are trying to do is erase all of that, yeah, right? To make right. it seem as though intention is totally irrelevant. Context is totally irrelevant. If she says someone's racist, then by definition, that person is racist. End of story, period. And I just disagree. I also disagree with raci racism is of that all... What was claimed? Is that what was, was, was what claimed or did the video just get posted? Was that the claim that was actually put there? All sorts, right? So I find it disgusting when people make generalizations about black people or migrants or any group why would I somehow be okay making generalizations about white women or white people, right? So mm -hmm. 
I just, huh? I find it gross and divisive. And look, at the center of huh? all of this is, I've been doing this shit for like 17 years and things have gotten worse. And I just don't think whatever strategy the left what thinks saying. they're engaging in is an effective strategy. I you Anna Kasparian have been one of the biggest voices on the left. It's your motherfucking timeline. You subscribe to it. It's your motherfucking left. You built it. You, you Anna Kasparian have one of the biggest openly left leftist platforms on the entire fucking, uh, uh, in the entire fucking world. Anna Kasparian and Cenk have loudly for years been, we're the leftists, we're building the left, we're building a left. You motherfuckers built it. This is so pathetic. It's so like, oh, my five million subscribers show. We just, we just can't handle the Twitter bants. People were so mean to us on Twitter. Bullshit, I think it's bullshit, I call bullshit. I'm sorry, you all are smarter than this. That's right, I'm pointing at you all, I'm pointing at the viewers, I'm pointing at anyone in here who's watching this shit. You guys are smarter than this. You're so much fucking smarter than this shit. I know you guys don't buy this fucking crap. Anna Kasparian has built the modern left. <laughs> at least a big part of it. At least a big part of it. We cause more harm than good. I think their rhetoric and their discourse is a lot of times ignorant of the facts. And I think that they go around accusing people of doing things that they themselves engage in. And mm -hmm. I was part of that too. I'm trying to do better moving forward. But a lot of people are gonna look at this and think, oh, well then that means she's a right winger. Whatever, you can call me whatever you want. I don't care what, what you <laughs> label me as, but just not birth in person. Don't call me birth in person. <laughs> birth with the uterus. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't oh, well, then good. I guess she doesn't literally just gave me permission to call her a grifter then. I don't care what you call me as long as you don't call me a birthing person. Well, first of all, nobody fucking ever called you a birthing person. Notice that Anna never, ever, ever even remotely re uh, uh, referenced when she was called a birthing person because it never fucking happened. It never actually happened. She just made that up. It was something that happened in her mind. She was pissed off on Twitter one day and she stepped in her own fucking shit and made a big shitstorm about it. And when people corrected her, when people were correct in presenting an argument, she had a meltdown over it. And now here we are. But anyway, I've just received permission to call Anna, Anna Kasparian a grifter from Anna herself. So congratulations. Same you at all, so. Yeah, yeah, I just, I don't yeah, know. I don't, I don't know what my labels are at this point right. because I don't fit in anywhere. I feel like you're. You feel like you're becoming politically <laughs> homeless, maybe a little bit. Oh, um, for sure. Yeah. What, what do you think? Wait, there's the politically homeless. Oh boy. Well, you better you better hurry up and get yourself a house before the cops arrest you. Remember when Anna Kasparian, uh, actually, it's funny, the first thing that Anna Kasparian got roasted for, the first thing that the left criticized Anna for was not actually the birthing person thing. It was her takes, it was her getting mad uh, uh, that her city council decided to, to break, to stop uh, doing homeless sweeps like sweeping homeless encampments for those of you guys who don't know what a homeless encampment sweep is if you're lucky enough to never have had to think about that or witness it it's basically when cops come in in riot gear and bring in bulldozers and they uh they blare a bunch of sounds and they tell homeless people get the fuck out and then they flatten all of their shit they throw away all their tents and possessions uh for the uh the purpose of of getting rid of the homeless encampment it's completely heinous. It doesn't do anything to actually fix homelessness and it actually makes it worse because those homeless people now have their possessions. If those homeless people were making progress towards some level of stability, they've now been knocked out even worse. They've been put into worse conditions and now they're forced out to other areas. It's a inhumane and insane practice. It's literal Robocop shit. It's the most vicious and evil crap. And her town, uh, d the progressives in her town, voted to stop doing uh to stop enforcing anti-encampment laws 
because it's obviously inhumane and where the fuck are homeless people supposed to go when you have a housing waiting list that's sometimes three to five years long, which it was at the time that she was opposing these changes. So that was the first thing that the left got mad at her for, was her getting mad at progressives for push it, for fighting against anti-encampment legislation. That was the first cancellation. And what I mean by cancellation is people disagreeing with her and saying that's shitty politics. <sighs> the irony of becoming politically homeless in a time like this what do you think's causing sort of this shift in the left and in media? Or, I mean, first of all, I'm assuming you think there is a shift that's happening. Was it her crime take that people got mad about first? I could have sworn that it was the homelessness takes that were before the crime take, but you might be right. It might be her crime takes that people got mad about. I could have sworn it was the homelessness takes. Maybe my timeline's a little bit wrong. I apologize. On the left and in media. Mm -hmm. um, so you, well. Yeah. It's funny because, you know, a lot of them, LARP is like anti-capitalist, like revolutionaries. <laughs> or LARP. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, but it's true. And so uh -huh. it's... Re Man, they have nothing. They're just literally, they're just jerking her off. Really funny because what they do is they are positioning themselves to attract a very specific niche uh, in, <laughs> in audiences, right? So they're going for the purists. The people who like oh. to think of themselves as like far left communists. Oh yeah, the purists, a notoriously valuable uh, audience to go after. Totally super valuable to go after purists historically. Yeah, dude, tons of people make tons of money going after, uh, you know, it's definitely not the lowest common denominator that you would target if you were a grifter. Socialist, whatever. Mm -hmm. But like the whole thing is, I mean, you can see it in the various streams. Like they'll talk about things through the lens of we're the we're the most pure, like we're the most you know, sincere in what we're saying, whatever. The and, real and left, like, yeah. Exactly, we're the real left. So when they do that, what ends up happening is they become more and more extreme in what they are saying, right? In what they claim to believe. Who are you and talking at about? At the heart of that, like what they're actually- Who is being talked about here? actually doing is trying to attract a niche audience for what to make money <laughs> like it's i think that there's a i think there's a financial motive behind it anna you talking about a financial motive as you obviously practically pitch yourself to a right-wing podcast on your show where you make a fuckload of money you make so much more fucking money than any of these people don't even fucking start your show is huge and you guys run crazy ads. The one thing I've complained about TYT for the entire time I've been a streamer, my biggest complaint about TYT is how often you guys shake down your audience. Ad after ad after ad, subscribe, donate, subscribe, donate, do ad, 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 ad. Fucking come on. Bullshit. This is fucking bullshit. You're full you know, of they're shit. competing with one another for, uh, you know, a particular niche, a particular ideology oh that's reflected in these audiences. And oh, there's Sargon of Akkad, by the way, in chat right there. I think I'm probably self-sabotaging right now, career-wise. <laughs> yeah, but totally. I don't know. I just the the problem is once you see certain things, you can't unsee them. Right. And I I right. I can't I can't I can't just lie. I I can't do it with a straight face. It's just not who I am. What What mm -hmm. do you mean? Are you talking self-sabotaging by talking to us or talking about these things in general? Because I I. Like it, it's an interesting dynamic that we have here on the internet because I do agree with you and we've talked about this on the show many, many times. Like the incendiary voices in the political space are the ones that get attention, blow their channels up, get views. You mean like Anna Kasparian who has an, a, an, a history of going really fucking hard on people and blowing up on her stream and calling people fucking stupid, liars, grifters, assholes? You mean like she did for uh, Dave Rubin and Jimmy Dore and all those other people? Exactly what you do? Like you go toxic and go hard on people? Fuck this shit. You know, Man, this is the thing that gets me. The thing that's so disappointing about all this, and the, honestly, I, I mean, I don't, 
I don't know how, I don't know if we're gonna watch this entire thing at this point, because it feels like it's kind of going in circles now. Maybe we will, we'll go through as much as I can, because I do want to get to the Emma Vigland, Tim Pool thing. Um, it's just, they're just, they're such liars. All of it is just so fucking stupid. Like Anna Kasparian pretending like she's oh poor me when she makes more money than any of these people. They fucking union busted for God's sake. TYT union busted so they could make more money. They fucking specifically fought back against a union forming at their own company because they were afraid it would impact their profits. I'm not kidding you, that was their reason. They said unions can be good in some cases but aren't good at ours, we're a small company. They're huge. They're bigger than any of the show shows she's ta vaguely referencing. She's bigger than almost any of the other shows on the left, with with a very few exceptions. I think maybe uh, Sam Cedar is a more like, the majority report is a more like concentrated left show. They should probably have a bigger, strong leftist argument. It's just so much fucking dishonesty. All this shit is so much, it's so much dishonesty. It's all just vague posting and acting like you're not making any money and saying like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get destroyed by the left. Again, your audience is one of the biggest groups on the left, okay? If the left is toxic, you better look inward because your own fucking audience and your work have been building the left as it is now up to this point. Come rich, basically. Yeah. Conflict yep. entrepreneurs is what I always call them. And we, we're in a kind of a, you know, we are in the same kind of position that you've kind of come to. Like we want to give an honest, a fair assessment of both sides of the argument and try to kind of come to some sort of truth. And one of the, the paths that I think we've kind of fell into is just I think us Sitch and I arguing points makes it interesting enough that we can kind of build an audience and watching the um, watching the videos of you last week it kind of feels like that's kind of the direction you're going it seems like Jank is saying over the top things <laughs> and, and you're reeling him in which is I, I, I gotta tell you when I'm watching your show I'm going oh look An Anna is just like Sitch she won't let <laughs> yeah, yeah Anna never says over the top things ever it's never Anna saying the over the top things Shank have any fun. Are you saying you're the one saying over the top things? Look, <laughs> constantly. Also, keep in mind, oh God, let's just go. Constantly, and Sitch is like the, no, Adam, you know that's, that we don't know that yet. <laughs> so, but I think our audience understands that there's there's a little bit of a dynamic so going there. That, that's fun, but at the mm -hmm. same time, they are getting the information. So, but yeah. unfortunately for my reputation, it's like, don't listen to Adam, you know, he's always. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I mean, again, credit to Jank because. Again, he... can, have you guys ever seen these guys? Anybody who's an Adam and Sitch watcher out there, if you're out there, has Adam and Sitch ever jerked off a guest this hard? Have they have they done this before? Is this normal? He he's not like one of these like people who get super offended if you correct him right there on the spot. It's just I kind of went along with some of the more hyperbolic commentary, mostly because I was reading the same sources and I mm -hmm. had the same you know, I think he's doing better and better. Like we have conversations, we have a lot of conversations about a lot of these issues privately. And I'll just be like, look. <laughs> <laughs> so Sitch does the same thing to me. <laughs> yeah. And I'll just be like, look, look. I, I mean, before he was gonna go, he asked me if, he, if I thought it was a good idea that he was gonna go debate Destiny. And I said, no. Um, <laughs> and it's mostly because I just, I see a lot of like fady stuff going on in that realm too. Like with some of the debate stuff that takes place. But also I asked him like, what are you guys gonna debate? So first he said, oh, we're going to talk about like the Democratic Party and our disagreements about it. I, I was fine with that. But then he mentioned, he's like, and then we're going to talk about Rittenhouse. Um, you no. Yeah, so, he, then, so he knew Rittenhouse. Yeah, was of like course. Marinara says, so you're, you were a bad journalist and that's somehow the left's fault. Yeah, it's funny because Anna Kasparian constantly like touts her journalistic creds. Going to come up. Yeah, yeah. They, I think they agreed on the topics ahead of time. Okay. Um, wow. Okay. And, and you know, we had it. Look, I, Jake is his own man. The best I can do is, is share my perspective. And I just told him I was like, but he was. Yeah. Is she claiming that she hasn't been sincere for years and she's just been lying? I mean, I don't think. Again, I don't think anything that's being said here is truthful, at all. I just think she's saying whatever she thinks is going to play well to this audience, and it's clearly working because they are just gassing her up at every opportunity. 
all of this has just been wiffle waffle, nothing, vagities. Everything has been vagaries is the word I was looking for. It's all just been vague nonsense. It's all been fluff and puff with the hopes of, I, I'm sure she's happy that this is going to reach out and echo throughout the right wing net and a bunch of them are going to go, TYT based, see? Oh my God, Anna Kasparian told the truth about the trans agenda. Yeah, see, those trans freaks, they always cancel Jesse Singal. Yeah, that's right. They were, she said the left was freaking out about Kyle Rittenhouse based. Acting in self-defense. <laughs> <laughs> But, but look, look, Jenk just has a different perspective. It is what it is. Like, I'm not here to talk shit about Jenk. You know, like, we, we, and again, I want to give him credit because I can do, we can have the conversation on air, this exact conversation. And he's going to say the exact same thing. I'm going to say my piece. And it's not going to lead to, like, an uncomfortable relationship with him. It's not going to. Anna seems awesome. There's been, oh my God. Lead to retaliation. <laughs> so and I really commend funny. him for having an open mind. But to him, he just couldn't, um, he just disagrees about it being self defense. He thinks, like, he didn't need to, like, shoot so the gun, hard. he didn't kill people. I hear you. I wish, I wish it didn't end that way. But if I were in his shoes, yeah. I, I would have done the same thing. Yeah, I, you know? I probably would have prayed and sprayed. So I mean, <laughs> Rittenhouse did the right thing. Like it's a good thing he was uh, in control of the weapon instead of me. So. <laughs> Adam friended mass shooter moment. Yeah, it's it's funny that like. Yeah, this gets thrown around a lot. Like people accuse you of grifting, or other people of grifting when they start changing their beliefs. Even though it's like, like you're changing your beliefs in a way that would like be more likely to hurt your career as it comes to happen. I know, I like, know. Yeah, it's like insane. Cause... <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Even though we're jerking you off on our show, uh, and and Anna herself, Anna and Chenk have both spent an incredible amount of time on their show talking about how much money there is in the right. Yeah, totally. I know. I'm hurting myself in my career right now, guys, as I grin from ear to ear, knowing just how much money is going to flow in from me grifting to the right. You know what? Like, what so many people on the internet want is they just want you to choose one side very comfortably and to like fit into it, and to just say like these are the hyperbolic talking points. And then if you're like, well, let's add some nuance here, which pisses off your audience more often than not, you're like, well, you're a grifter. Like, well, who am I grifting to exactly? So okay, so I'm gonna stick up for my audience a little bit because um, to their credit, I think the majority of people in the audience are open-minded and are mm -hmm. open to new information. I think that there is a small but very loud minority in our audience and on the left in general that really give the left a bad name. I think mm -hmm. they're overrepresented on Twitter and they're children. <laughs> they act like children. I think some of them literally are like minors and they see everything. And look, if they're young, I don't blame them. I think when you are young, it's, it's a little more difficult to grasp nuance. So then why has this entire podcast so far, the 30 minutes of this podcast, 36 minutes of this podcast that we've watched, been you complaining about supposed children that got to you so bad? If you think it's just children on Twitter, then you should do your job as a fucking established journalist with a huge platform and actually focus on the issues and not get super triggered and have meltdowns. All of the professionals who reached out to you did so very peaceably with very few exceptions. And how complicated and complex a lot of these issues again, are. Again, this you is just, again, it's just the waffling. The, the left is full of children who don't matter, and yet they totally matter and totally canceled me and ruined me. My audience is, is leaving me en masse. This is taking a damage to my career, but really my audience is full of really smart people and the children don't matter. Just, okay, fuck, whatever. One of the favorite, one of the things that Jeffrey Single says all the time that I love, and he says it repeatedly is, it's complicated because it is, like all of these issues. <laughs> wow, what a sick quote of Jesse Single. As my friend likes to say, um, as my really smart friend likes to say, what? As my incredibly genius friend likes to say, hello. Amazing, amazing, incredible. Are, are way we... more complicated than the way they're being portrayed in partisan media. And so what I want to <sighs> do is actually understand those complexities. But here's the other thing understand the other side in good faith, okay? Because I think that there are some stereotypes that the left has kind of bought into about what the arguments are on the other side. And, you know, it doesn't make us sharper to misrepresent what the other side is actually saying. It actually makes us weaker. If you understand- All that you have done in your most recent uh, uh, spat with the left is misrepresent what others have said. This entire thing has been you demonstrably misrepresenting what other people said to you and fixating on random, in your own words, children on the internet in lieu of the people who actually tried to criticize you. I was one of the meanest people 
criticizing Anna. And I came very late to the game, okay? I let all of the friends of Anna Kasparian say their piece first, which they said very kindly. And what this is going to be, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't know that we're going to watch this entire podcast appearance because this is really long and it has been a giant circle so far. I, I should say a giant circle jerk. This has been the same topic over and over again for 36 minutes. It's just been her saying, yeah, um, the left is, is sucks and I'm politically homeless. And really in truth, um, everybody always mi misrepresents me and I never misrepresent anyone, even though I demonstrably misrepresented what other people said and I misrepresented represented uh, the argument that people made about birthing people and I misrepresented the people criticizing me but everybody else is wrong except for me this is so fucking boring arguments are it'll then allow you to reflect on what your own weaknesses might be in regard to the arguments that you're making and so right. And then oh, another here you go. Red473 with the $20. Hello, Anna. I've really valued your willingness to reflect on the craziness of the left. Would you be willing to talk to actual Justice Warrior? He's a big fan of yours. He was just on Tim Pool with Emma last week. There you fucking have it. Woo! There it begins. The cycle. I think this was an unexpected. This was an unexpected outcome that I was talking to my husband about just last night. I've been a lot happier lately, like a lot happier. And I think it's because once you actually, and look, I, I wanna make the distinction and, and like draw out a caveat. I'm not talking about like far right, like militia members. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about just mainstream conservatives, Republicans, whatever. Once you actually understand what their arguments are or where they're coming from, it's a lot more difficult to be hyperbolic about things, right? Yeah. And that is not how, this is not how Anna has talked about the right wing and GOP on her show. My God, I hope the T I hope TYT fans are willing to actually call her on her shit and show clips of her talking about fucking just ragging on the GOP, talking about how the GOP has completely lost its mind and the average GOP voter is completely distanced from reality because I've seen those clips and I'm not even a fan of the show. This is so funny. She is t putting on such an act. Uh, notice how different this Anna is on this show. You know, once you get through it, I'm not talking about the militia members, but the average Republican, the average right winger really isn't so bad all of a sudden. Fucking fraud. Fraud. So you kind of start seeing the world around you for what it really is. And this is a call to action to all of the TYT fans and TYT former fans out there. Do your job. This is your chance to show how much bullshit this is. You guys should be more offended than me. I'm not even a fan of TYT. I've basically disliked their show for a long time, although I have stand Anna in the past. I've been a big fan of Anna specifically. I never really liked TYT, I'll be completely honest. I think watching Benny Carollo's video about leaving TYT would be great to watch after this. Yeah, we'll probably switch over to that sh too, especially if they loop again, if they're just going to loop and this is just going to be a constant going back and forth of her saying, I'm so reasonable and the left is so unreasonable. That's why I'm politically homeless. I'm, I'm going to check out. This is like the, the so little substance, all just vague crap and, and, and pitching directly to the right wing audience by being like, I know the average right winger isn't so bad. A certain amount of fear that kind of starts to dissipate a certain amount of like hyperbolic thinking that starts to go away. And you start to see things a lot more clearly and the world isn't as messed up as people would have you believe and that's a good thing now some yeah. people might get super offended at me saying that because they they've completely bought it you were just talking about the crime wave you were just talking about how fucked up the world is 10 minutes ago and how much how much crime there is everywhere do you see what I'm talking about? This is maddening. She's all the fuck over the place. Is the world super fucked up or isn't it? You, you're, you're saying that Jesse Singal, the guy who says that there's like a so social contagion transforming uh, uh, tomboys and tom girls into into trans people that's being perpetrated by a secret uh, conspiracy of trans activists, and yet now you're trying to say the world isn't as crazy. Which one fucking is it? Is there a giant mysterious crime wave that? isn't reflected in the statistics are the tr is there a giant uh, gender ideology commanding the minds of your kids or is the world less crazy than you think you can't have bo it both ways you fucking can't have it both goddamn ways i'm getting whiplash and this is boring 
Also, they just repealed, yes, as 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 uh, Baven Tarson points out in YouTube chat, they just fucking repealed Roe v. Wade. So which fucking one is it? It's the hyperbolic thinking and they think the world's coming to an end. And there are terrible <sighs> things happening. I, I don't want to minimize that, but right. we need to be realistic about what's actually transpiring in the country and for areas where we need improvement or different policy solutions. And your idea of that is to focus on trans people? Your idea on that is to freak out on trans people on Twitter and yell at them and say that it's trans people that are causing, uh, that are making things worse for themselves and not the insane right wing that is freaking out about trans people? Are you fucking crazy? This is fucking insane. We should actually have good faith debates about it and come up with those solutions. And I think that the current discourse is standing in the way of that. Mm -hmm. that's, we, that's really fast. I never thought about that because, but it makes perfect sense if, you know, people go into politics and they have this very like, the other side is either composed of like all racists who want to enable, you know, some kind of fascistic regime against me, right. or like yeah. the other side hey, is all made of like, you know, communists who want to take it. over the country. Like, well. it's going to put you in this headspace. You're like, oh my God, like, I'm in this fight for my life. Like, this is like the most important thing ever. And then you're like, well, once you start to see like, well, yeah, there's like, there's small pockets of that that exist, but the average person is not that. You're like, oh my God, this is weight has been lifted from my shoulder. I don't feel like, like the world is about to end. Yeah, yeah, totally. I want to say two things. Uh, first of all, and I, I don't know your take on Jordan Peterson, but it is like uh, the first rule is tell the truth. And I feel like coming to a place in your life. This is going to be a real test. If Anna Kasparian can't denounce Jordan Peterson to this audience, by the way, Anna Kasparian has denounced Jordan Peterson in the past, obviously. We all know this. So this is a real moment, okay? This will tell you if, let's see if she's able to denounce Jordan Peterson in front of this audience. And if she's not able to firmly denounce Jordan Peterson in front of this audience, you will know for a fact that she's grifting to this audience. Because any fucking person, any liberal worth their salt should be able to denounce a uh, cultural Marxism, uh, Jordan Peterson, the deranged Jordan Peterson and his bullshit easily. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's see. Life where you're like, I feel like I'm honestly telling the truth now. I can see where that would make me feel completely better. I'm one of these people who just hates thinking I'm being dishonest or if I'm in a position where I'm forced to be dishonest for a job or something like that. Mm -hmm. I just, oh, it's horrifying for me. So, and I do think it is kind of po po uh, politically expedient for a lot of people to categorize far right, racist, Nazi pieces of shit who, you know, <laughs> none of us are in favor of for moderate Republicans who just want, some, mm -hmm. you know, they have a different. You have Sargon of Akkad in your audience right now. You have your chat is suggesting people go on actual Justice Warrior show. Come the fuck on. Come the fuck on, dude. Different spin on some sort of. Do you disavow? You disavow? Do you disavow? Everybody knows that meme now, by the way. Good thing, good thing everybody knows they disavow. Policy prescription, which my thinking of the world. Super chat for $20. I am now pro Anna. Kudos to all three of you. Followed up by ask her take on the race war in France. Is, you know, you've got the, the conservatives on the right who are kind of playing defense for society and you have liberals and progressives on the right who are kind of, or on the left who are kind of playing offense for society. They're the ones that are pitching all of these crazy policies for making society better. And conservatives are kind of saying, well, we're kind of good where we are now. Should we take the risk of doing this? And you really need, I mean, what sports team doesn't ha that doesn't have a good offense and a good defense is going to be a, a winning team. So a lot of the political polarization I see is part of the problem here. And one of the nice things about you is start, starting to realize, you know, there are people on the right that aren't just crazy, insane racists, and maybe you can communicate their arguments clearly to your audience, which is a, a great position to be in. We might be able to deal with some of the political polarization. Yeah, I mean, I think there are, look, I disagree with many of the policy ideas they have or the perspectives they espouse, but there are... <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is totally funny. A $100 super chat in their chat. Sword and scale. TYT recently defamed me by intentionally taking a tweet of mine out of context. Will they be apologizing and issuing a retraction? <laughs> I'm sorry. That just, I'm sorry. That just made me laugh. Okay. I'm, I know that's not, not any incisive or deep political commentary. That just made me fucking laugh. Okay. I want to know what the tweet was. <laughs> Our good faith thoughtful conservative Republicans out there. Like, I think Glenn Lowry is a good example. You know, again, mm -hmm. I might not agree with everything he has to say, but he's a thoughtful person and right. he is not in any way um, justifying, you know, white supremacy or <laughs> some of the like hyperbolic things that he might get accused of um, mm -hmm. by those on the left. And again, it's really about understanding in good faith, the other side and being able to, I guess, debate the, the issues as opposed to like what I, what I see happening right now is 
I want the left to engage in the argument as opposed to what I see happening, which is them engaging in like... She completely dodged the Jordan Peterson thing. You notice that? He asked her a direct question about Jordan Peterson and she just completely ignored it. Incredible, right? Ad hominem in a lot, in a lot of cases, uh, character assassination or like statements about the individual's character based on their preconceived notions and based on what they heard other streamers say about the individual. It's like, okay, just take a step back for a second. You need to address the point that this person is making. And if you're not addressing the point that this person is making, and instead you're turning around and, and throwing all sorts of like accusations at them to make them seem like they're immoral or they're bad people, then that tells me that you don't really have an answer to what they're saying, you know? And I, I see that happening more when it comes to culture war related issues as opposed to economic issues. And that's the other thing. I mean, I think that the left has completely, and they'll, they'll deny this, but I mean, just go to Twitter right now. They've like abandoned economic policies. <laughs> what, what? Oh my God, she's speed running it. <laughs> yeah, they just don't care about class. They only care about stupid identity politics, which I choose to po talk about all the time using my platform as a formerly major leftist, uh, loud, avowed leftist content creator. You made it. You made it. You made it. You have a huge platform. You could choose, you could have chosen to not do a segment about birthing people and to instead do a segment about unions. You could have chosen to do that and you didn't. And in fact, when people pointed that out to you, you got mad at them and told them to shut the fuck up. Oh man, this is so pathetic. Remember, everyone, even though there is a lot of money to be made in grifting to the right, as even Anna and Cenk have repeatedly acknowledged on their show, you will never get any self-respect. It is, you have to, like I said earlier, melon ball out your own soul. You have to fucking scoop your own soul out and debase yourself and become a hollow, empty shell of a person that shifts to whatever uh, audience you're in front of so that they don't, their fifis don't get hurt because the right is the biggest snowflakes on the planet. And guess what? Fucking Anna Kasparian has gone on rants about the right being snowflakes. You ever, th like this is so, so dishonest. It's so fucking pathetic. I hope this path eats her alive. It always does. Have you ever seen a happy right wing uh, talking head? Because they don't fucking exist. There's not a single fucking one of them. Tim Pool, when he, when, when, when you know, remember that clip of Tim Pool talk, like sadly admitting to that life coach on his own show that he can't get laid? Remember all those, remember all we've seen about Steven Crowder and his miserable ass life? There's not a single satisfied one of them. Their path does not bring happiness. It's just true. It might bring you money, but guess what? Money can only buy you so much happiness. You only get so much happiness from, from money. You only get, money only brings you happiness in that you don't have to worry about the bills anymore. And after that, you gotta find a way to be, to live a good life. You gotta find a way to live a full life and have full beliefs. And I can tell you shucking out your soul so that you can uh, appeal to the, uh, the, uh, the audience of Adam and fucking Sitch is not gonna do it, okay? It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna do it. Theory Cow, thank you very, very much for the $5. I might actually try that. Thank you very much. And instead, mm -hmm. hyper-focused on incredibly divisive, like, I I identity-related issues, right? Yeah. And, right. yeah. And, and like... What, what, which one? Which issue? Name it. What hyper-divisive identity-related issue, huh? What's the one? Name it. Are you talking about trans people? Is that, is that the one? Are you talking about... What do you, what's the one? Is it, is it about racial justice? What is it? Which one is it? Notice how vague she is. Notice how fucking vague she is. I, I really want to know what's the super, what's the super divisive issue that has the left split up? Because I don't know what it is. And I've been pretty fucking critical about the way that the left argues and infights, but there's not like there's some fucking giant single divisive issue that's splitting up the left. I can't, I, I couldn't name it. What is it? And I don't even, I'm fucking critical of the left all the time, but I'm also not a fucking fraud. So I guess that's it. Their take is always, oh, well, the other side wants us just be, they're racist, that's why. They're yeah. transphobic, that's why. And it's like, no, you gotta do more than that. So mm -hmm. if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna refute what they're saying, 
than actually address the points they're making. And if you're we're not just doing it again, we're, we're, we've looped again. She's just misrepresenting the arguments of people who disagreed with her while simultaneously saying that the people who disagreed with her are only children on Twitter who supposedly don't matter, but apparently their opinions are so divisive that it completely overwhelms her gigantic platform. Apparently a handful of children on Twitter have been able to completely undo her little media empire. We did it again. We've looped. This is the fourth time that she said this. To do that, you're going to come out looking incredibly weak and childish. You probably don't know this, but we talk about MMT and UBI on the stream quite often. <laughs> it, dri it drives people crazy. I mean, how do you make affordable housing sexy? It just, it's like, it's not no, necessarily a thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's its surprising because I did a story just last Wednesday um, on Air Airbnb crashing. And, I watched you know, that vid, yeah. Yeah, and that video, I'm kind of shocked. It got like 200,000 views. It was not something I expected. I thought like, oh, it's a dense like statistics driven, you know, video, but it did well. And I think that there is a hunger for those types of videos and for that type of content. It's then, then do them. Then everybody, all of the major critics would prefer that you do a video about housing than you getting mad about a fake situation that you invented in your mind about birthing people, misrepresenting an argument that you've already demonstrated you know you were misrepresenting, and then tr treating a bunch of people like they're insane and telling trans people that they're, uh, that they're like their own, uh, th they're the problem. Oh yeah, and of course, can we, can we just take a second? Let's take a break for just a second. Can I bring this up real quick? Man, this is so fucking funny. Let me just show you. Did you did anybody see what, what Anna Kasparian was getting into today? Let me just show you the clip. <laughs> Hold on, let me just bring it up. <laughs> Here you go. Here. The civil rights movement did not use the same strategies as the trans movement. They didn't barricade speakers they disagreed with in a classroom for three hours. They persuaded through nonviolence and showing America their humanity. Yeah, uh, the trans movement has never attempted to show their humanity. The, the, the trans movement it has gone too far. Now, of course, she got uh, completely and utterly obliterated by this. And is I'm literally seeing people still p calling her out on this right now. But guess what? That was, that was part of a much larger conversation, let me tell you. An incredible, absolutely fucking incredible moment. Just amazing. Hold on, let me see if I can get you the rest of the context for that real quick, because I want to show you guys the rest of the conversation. Yeah, here we go. She got into a beef with a trans shit poster, not an activist, a trans shit poster named Juniper. Some of you are familiar. Now these tweets have been deleted now. I wonder why. I wonder if what she said here might have been really fucking stupid. I guess history will never know. And Juniper said, you intentionally misunderstood what I said, you moron. And then she says, no, I didn't. You said barricading people you di disagree with is nonviolent. If an alt-right group did that to a trans speaker, I'm sure you would change your tune. You're dishonest, childish, and batshit crazy. Not sure if you've noticed this, but states are currently using violence against trans people. Curious as to why you seem to care about the grifter who terrorizes trans people more than the trans people who are being affected by this legislation and violence. You don't watch the show, so you have no idea what I talk about or how often I defend the trans community. Go check out my previous video to find out how often Anna Kasparian goes out of her way to... to, to protect to, to defend the trans community because let me tell you it's not all that often i think the fringe shit and activists like you turn the country against people meaning trans people you're just too stupid to see it this is an excellent thing to say Oh, and here's the response, by the way. The sad thing is I used to watch your show growing up. You and Cenk, you both inspired me a decade ago to take bold stances on issues that might be hard to defend because you truly believe in them. It's pathetic to see how you've fallen from grace and turned into something like this. Incredible. Yeah, notice, yeah, I think the fringe shit and activists like you literally just a shit poster turn the country against trans people
That's the implied there, against people, meaning against trans people. You're just too stupid to see it. By the way, let's just take a look here at the difference in follow count. 530,000 followers, 230,000 followers. So a 300,000 follower difference on just Twitter alone, let alone, let's not forget that this is Anna Kasparian's professional account for her 5 million subscriber show. But this is what she's t taking her time and using her platform to do. And and let me see, can I find? Oh, she deleted. This is this is where she deleted the uh, that other one that I showed you. But let me just show. You. <laughs> Hold on. Optics frogging a, frogging a meme account. Yeah, literally. But but it's it shows you where her mind is at. It demonstrates li li explicitly where her mind is at on this issue that she thinks it's trans people's faults uh, that, that the, 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 uh, the world is in the state that it's in. It's, tr it's blame the trans people because I'm mad at them and completely, again, this was part of that thread. This was one of the two deleted tweets. The civil rights movement did not use the same strategies as the trans movement. They didn't barricade speakers they disagreed with in a classroom for three hours. They persuaded through nonviolence and showing America their humanity. By the way, the incredibly and forever wise Doe brought this up. In 1969, actor Samuel L. Jackson was expelled from the historically black Morehouse College for locking board members in a building for two days in protest of the school's curriculum and governance. Included in the group of people who were held hostage was Martin Luther King's junior own father, Martin Luther King Sr. God tier dough coming in with actual history once again. Yeah, as it turns out, uh, uh, and, and let's be real, Anna Kasparian is full of shit pretending that the civil rights movement was all made up of like, um, you know, feel good, uh, uh, always peaceful activists. That was not even, <laughs> that was not even the half of the movement, okay? That was one part of the movement. And there were a whole lot of different perspectives on that. And I'll let you know, even Martin Luther King Jr., the most recognized peaceful advocate of the civil rights movement, was in his time framed as a violent uh, person. You guys have seen that cartoon, right? Hold on, let me see if I can find the, the political cartoon. Let me see if I can find the old political cartoon. Many of you, I'm sure, have seen it. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. This is the one. Is this the, can I get the full full quality? Yeah, here we go. This is that famous political cartoon from the time. I plan to lead another nonviolent march tomorrow. And it's a picture of Martin Luther King and there's a dead, dead white guy in the street and all the cars are on fire. Yeah, they acted like he was, he was violent at the time too. Interesting. It's it's really fucking amazing, isn't it? The villainization that trans people get that Anna Kasparian is participating in in real time while also using her giant platform to freak out at a random shit poster who didn't even start out by being harsh to her, who didn't even start out by being uh, uh, rude uh, 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 to, to, to Anna Kasparian. Yeah, here's a picture. Oh, cool. Look at this. They got a picture of that incident. Here's a here's a photograph of the incident in which they took those people hostage at the college. Here's a picture. Just so you, just so we know. From that incident. They're all armed. They're armed to the teeth. Austin Ox says, this ought to get your leftist card revoked. What the fucking hell? She blocked me and then deleted her tweets coming after me. A shame it's come to this, says Juniper. Screenshots are forever. Wait, this is what she said. So, oh my God. Juniper wasn't even tweeting at her.
Juniper just said barricading speakers, or, or maybe this was a response. This might have been a reply. Barricading speakers is not violent. You are genuinely stupid if you cannot see how insane it is that you are comparing trans people defending ourselves to groups like the KKK. And she replies by saying, you're fucking brain dead. Don't gaslight me to say that barricading someone in a fucking classroom for three hours is nonviolent. The speaker had nothing to do with the KKK. Disgusting. This was a reply. I want to see. Can we get the original reply? I want to see what the original reply is. Here we go. I don't give a shit how many viewers turn on me. I will never minimize any political violence of any kind. It's what losers do when they can't strategize and win an argument. This is this is what started it all. This is the full thread. Oh, I want to look through. I want to see if we can get the full thread. I want to see the um it's it's hard because of the deletions. Oh, here we go. So here's what started it. What are you talking? Oh, she deleted this one. What are you talking about? Violence was used in a critical part of the success of the civil rights movement. You are just historically wrong. Are you guys genuinely this stupid? The movement made a point to be nonviolent and the violence used against them is part of what changed hearts and minds. Trans activists barricading a speaker at SFSU runs counter to that strategy. Holy fucking shit. I wanna, what's, I wanna know this one. I didn't make things up, and my point is that this stuff turns people off. It's really not controversial. David Dole asks, honest question. Now, David Dole, by the way, is one of those people who's who's treated Anna Kasparian very gently. David Dole is another uh, uh, leftist content creator, a member uh, of the um, a member of the leftist mafia. Honest question. Here's David Dole. What do you think is the impact of comments like yours? Do you think that this group you referred to, assuming that they're real, are now going to stop? The reason why the right turns anecdotes into national stories is to specifically demonize the entire trans movement. Assuming they're real, I just linked to it. The right turns these anecdotes to national stories because they know it will turn people off. My argument is to be a little more strategic and tactful to secure health care and housing for the trans community. That's my point. Stop with the concern trolling. Just stop it. What is the original story? Let's look at the original story that she linked. I want to see what it is. What? This is the story that she linked to? why bonus hole is going viral on Twitter and what the term means. After spending a little time on social media today, you might be wondering what is a bonus hole and why is the term all over your Twitter feed? Joe's Cervical Cancer Trust in partnership with the LGBT Foundation and LGBTQ charitable organization began suggesting the term bonus hole be used as a way to support trans men and non-binary women or non-binary people. Sorry, wow, misread. Uh, according uh, to the glossary, a bonus hole is an alternative word for the vagina. And recommended checking to see which word someone would prefer to use. They also suggested using front hole as an alternative term. So some random people doing a, a fundraiser made a joke about bonus hole and said it could be it could be a way to be more uh, uh, more accepting in certain contexts? Huh? Who fucking cares? What the fuck is this talking about? Who fucking cares? It's some random thing that somebody said at some point. What is this supposed to mean? And why is it justified by her giving it more time of day? What the fuck? To be clear, since apparently this has to be spelled out, no one, literally no one, is saying the word bonus hole is mandatory for anyone to use, be they cis, trans, or non-binary. It's simply a suggestion, 
a suggestion presented for some trans men and non-binary people and anyone who prefers it could use. This is not hard to grasp. This is in the article she sent. She sent this article and it's in here. It's saying this is another word that some people could use if they wanted to. God damn it. Do you see why I say that all of this has just been her being just disgustingly dishonest? And this led to her calling people fucking brain dead and, and stupid and saying, oh, you saying to a trans person, this is why you're, this is why people don't like you and people are turned against you. What an absolutely insane situation. What a fucking stupid, embarrassing, pathetic way to go. Do we even need to watch any more of this? Do we need to do more of this? Here's a silly meme. Here's a silly name you could say. I took this personally. It's literally her freaking out for no reason. Not gonna go super viral, like some hyperbolic, you know, video about like a police shooting or about an alleged Karen, right? But I don't really care. Like I, I just, look, I don't wanna be part of the problem. I don't want to add to this toxic discourse that does nothing to improve it. Is that why you freaked out and called a random trans person f like brain dead and then said it was their own fault that, that, that there's a hate campaign against trans people in this country? Man, fuck Anna Kasparian, straight up. Conclusion? I don't give a shit about Anna Kasparian anymore. I am tired of her concern trolling. I'm tired of her being toxic as shit on the internet and then pretending that it's only everyone else who's being toxic to her. I'm tired of her obviously being literally obviously misrepresenting history when it suits her. When you fucking know, you fucking know that this is not her genuinely held position. You know goddamn straight that, that uh, Anna Kasparian doesn't think that the civil rights movement was only made up of peaceful people. You know she doesn't fucking believe that. You know she knows that's not true. This is bullshit is what this is. And I'm calling bullshit on it. And everybody can cry and complain. And I'm sure Anna Kasparian will hear through the grapevine that the trans community, the, the queen of the trans community has canceled and put a fatwa on Anna Kasparian. But the truth is, I'm just tired of your bullshit. I'm just tired of you looking at the camera with your practice language and saying, you know, the right wing isn't so bad. And I've always known that. I was just too afraid to say it because of the big, scary um, people on Twitter who I also call teenagers and babies who don't matter at all, but they do matter. They matter to me and they were keeping me silenced from my giant five million subscriber platform in my, in, in my air conditioned and fancy studio with a production team that I'm a producer at. I'm done with it. I'm fucking tired of it. I am tired of pretending that we're not being bullshitted. This entire, we've reacted slowly and surely to an hour of this fucking interview and it's gone in circles. It's gone in circles of Anna Kasparian playing, oh poor me, boo hoo.